Hello fans and welcome to This Day in Baseball where we're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game and before we do that I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio and there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out this day in baseball, and enjoy the game. All down in the field now, the two starting pitchers taking the warm-up tosses. So right now would be a good time to light up a Viceroy. Viceroy is not too strong, not too light. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. That's right. And say, how about checking your supply of cold Rheingold? That's Rheingold Extra Dry. Yes, sir, put some Rheingold on ice, because it can add a lot to your enjoyment of the game. Here is a beer with clean, clear taste. Brisk and bright all the way through. Rheingold is beer as beer should taste. Dry tells you why. Well, here we are in Houston's Colt Stadium for the very first Colt Met game in Texas. In the only other meeting between these two clubs, it took place in New York with the Colts winning on a three-run home run in the 11th inning, 5-2. to two. The stadium here is a temporary one in lieu of a multi-million dollar one to be completed by the start of the 1963 season. It's a single-deck stadium with no roof, and there has been some comment about the lighting. We'll talk a little more about that later on right after this word. You know, a ball player can look awfully good in the spring, but it isn't until he's been around the league twice that the manager knows he's right. That's a pretty good way to judge filter cigarettes, too. Give all seven of the leaders a go-around, and you'll find some taste so strong, well, you wouldn't know they had a filter at all. Others taste so light that there's no more fun or flavor in smoking. And when you smoke Viceroy, you know you're enjoying big league taste. Because, my friend, Viceroy tastes the way you'd like a filter cigarette to taste. Yep. Viceroy's not too strong, not too light. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. Remember, there's no need to play a wild hunch when it comes to filter cigarettes. Play the percentages, and you're sure to come up with Viceroy. Prove it for yourself. Smoke all seven leading filter cigarettes and see how the ball bounces. I'll bet you'll find some taste too strong, some taste too light. But Viceroy's got the taste that's right. That's right, fans. Better change to Viceroy. Well, now they're going over the ground rules in this big stadium at 363, 360 feet down the left field and right field lines. Only two home runs have ever been hit over the right field fence here in this ballpark. It's sort of the reverse, the antithesis of the ballpark in San Francisco, Candlestick Park. The wind blows in from right field very strongly. 420 feet to center field and out in center, left center, 427 also in center, right center. There go the Houston Colts out on the field and we will give you their starting lineup. Playing in the left field, Al Spangler, batting in the leadoff position. Batting second and playing third base, Billy Goodman, a recent acquisition. Batting in the third position, playing in right field, Ramon Mejia. Batting fourth and playing first base, Norm Locker. Batting in the fifth position and playing in center field, Carl Warwick. Batting sixth and doing the catching, Hal Smith. The seventh batter will be Bob Ascomani. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. To continue on with the starting lineups, after Bob Astromani in the seventh position, we have the eighth batter playing shortstop, Don Budden. And on the mound, pitching, batting in the ninth position, Jim Golden. For the New York Mets, who currently now have moved ahead of the Houston Colts, the leadoff man will be Jim Hickman. He'll be playing in center field. Batting second and playing shortstop, Elio Chacon. The third batter will be the right fielder, just arriving from Syracuse, Joe Christopher. Batting in the fourth position in left field, Frank Thomas. Batting fifth, playing first base, Ed Boucher. Batting in the sixth position, playing at second base, Charlie Neal. Batting after Charlie Neal, in the seventh position, the third baseman, Felix Mantia. And batting eighth, doing the catching, Sammy Taylor. 
And on the mound for the New York Mets will be Dave Hillman. He'll be making his first start for the Mets this year. The ballpark is located not too far from downtown. You can look over the left field fence and see the city of Houston, the large part of the main part of the city. And we're all set to go now in a ball game, the first game ever between the New York Mets and the Houston Colts here in Texas. And to tell you all about it, once again, one of the top announcers in baseball, the top announcer in sports for the last three years, Lindsey Nelson. Thanks very much, Ralph Kiner. And Jim Hickman steps into the batter's box to lead off for the New York Mets. He's a right-hand batter, and he has a batting average of 282. Jim Golden has a record of one victory and one loss. He is into the windup, and here is the pitch. It's in there for a call strike one. Ed Sudol, the umpire behind the plate, Al Foreman at first, Tom Gorman at second, and Bill Joukowsky around at third. There was a little electronic difficulty with the playing of the national anthem here tonight, uh, so that the players uh, were caught standing at attention for a little while there. Here's a swing and a miss. Strike two count now to Jim Hickman, leading off for the New York Mets, who have won nine of their last 12 games. They have played the Houston Colt 45s only one time. That was at the Polo Grounds in New York early in the season. And the Colt 45s won it in extra innings by a score of 5-2 and down button hit a home run. Here is the two-strike pitch. It's in there for call strike three, and Hickman is called out on strike. So Jim Golden gets the first man to face him, and that brings up Elio Chacon with a batting average of 260. Chacon wearing number seven on his back. Right-hand batter. He has been swinging a hot stick of late. Defensively, the Houston Colt 45s on the infield have Norm Larker at first, Bob Ospermani at second, Don Buttle at short, and Billy Goodman around at third. Al Spangler in left, Carl Warwick in center, Roman Mejias in right, Hal Smith catching, and Jim Golden the pitcher. A warm night in Houston, Texas. Pitcher swung out and has a fly ball going out into short center field. Second baseman, Astromani is over calling, and Astromani takes it for the out. Two men out, nobody on base now for the New York Mets, and here is Joe Christopher coming around. Joe Christopher joined or rather rejoined the New York Mets late this afternoon. Gus Bell was left in Milwaukee with the Braves in completion of the deal whereby the Mets acquired Frank Thomas before the start of the season. And when Bell was left with the Milwaukee Braves, Joe Christopher was brought back from Syracuse where he was hitting 336 and had six home runs. He is a right-hand batter. Since the last few years with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Jim Goldman. Goldman winds and fires. as a swing and a fly ball out into center field. Carl Warwick is coming and going back is Aspermani in the second baseman. Aspermani takes it. Out in short center field. So Christopher popped out and in the top half of the first inning. The New York Mets are out with no runs, on no hits, no errors, and nobody left. And at the end of one half inning of play, the score is the New York Mets nothing and the Houston Colt 45 is coming up nothing. And now a word from Viceroy Cigarette. <laughs> to the dance one night, swing your partner and circle to the right. I took a breather after a while, and the bell of the ball walked up with a smile. Ah, you smoke filters, I see. The regular kind are too strong for me. Yep, I got a Viceroy just for you. You heard about the filter. Mm, tastes good, too. Viceroy tastes the way you'd like a filter cigarette to taste. Not too strong, not too light. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. That's right, that's, that's right. right. Well, we set out the rest of the dance. Change your partner. Uh, not a chance. <laughs> that's right. I want you to know, and I'll take all bets. If you smoke all seven children's cigarettes, you'll find some too strong. Some too light. But Viceroy's got the taste that's right. That's right. Well, that's right. That's right. As we go now to the bottom half of the first inning, the Houston Colt 45s will send up Al Spangler, Billy Goodman, and Roman Mejias. Pitching tonight in his first start for the New York Mets is right-hander Dave Hillman. Hillman has appeared five times in relief, has no one or lost record with the New York Mets this season. Hillman is 34 years old. Last season with the Boston Red Sox, he had a record of three victories and two losses. He is looking in now to get the sign from catcher Sammy Taylor. Left-hand batter Al Spangler standing in the batting box. He has a batting average of 267. He has good speed. Pitch is in there for a call strike one. Spangler was an expansion draft selection of the Houston Colt 45s off the roster of the Milwaukee Braves. Dave Hillman came to the major leagues with the Chicago Cubs in 1956. Here's a swing and a fly ball going out into short center. Elio Chacon, the shortstop, is out and calling. 
And he takes it for the out. Behind the bag at second and short center. There is one away. And that will bring up the veteran Billy Goodman. Left-hand batter. Has an early season batting average of 150. Picked up as a free agent by the Houston Colt 45s. One-time batting champion of the American League when he was with the Boston Red Sox. And he is facing Dave Hillman. Hillman came to the Major League after he had posted a tremendous record with Los Angeles in the Pacific Coast League in 1956. 21 victories and 7 losses that year for Hillman in the Pacific Coast League. And that got him a job at Chicago. He is still waiting to get a sign from catcher Sammy Taylor. Hips into the windup. And now stops as Al Spangler backs out of the batter's box. And we start the procedure all over again. Or rather, Billy Goodman steps out of the batter's box. There's the pitch, and it goes for ball one. Billy Goodman batting number two in the batting order. Jimmy Adair is coaching at first base. Our manager, Harry Kraft, Houston Code 45s, and Lum Harris is around at third. Bottom half of the first, nothing, nothing. The game having just begun in Houston, Texas. That pitch is low in the dirt. It's 2-0 now. Roman Mejia swinging the bats in the on-deck circle for Houston. As Dave Hillman is set to work the 2-0 pitch, swung on and fouled off for strike one. Before the start of tonight's ball game, the entire Mets squad was introduced here. One by one on the public address system, uh, sort of an opening day uh, procedure as they ran out onto the field to line up. The entire squad being introduced to the Houston fans here. It's 2-1 pitch, swung on, and has a fly ball down the left field line. Frank Thomas is going over near the line, and he hauls it down for the out. So Billy Goodman has fly out to Thomas in left. Two away, nobody on for the Houston Colt 45s in the bottom of the first, with Roman Mejia's coming up. He was up and down between the Pittsburgh Pirates and uh, Columbus for several seasons. Right now he is leading this club at bat, and listen to the hand he gets here in Houston. Roman Mejias is a right-hand batter. He's hitting 298. He has eight home runs and 22 runs batted in. He has uh, been a big man in the attack for the Houston Colts 45. And manager Harry Kraft has him batting number three in the batting order. Dave Hillman is set to work. The pitch to Mejias. In there for a call, strike one. During the pregame introductions, of course, it goes without saying that the biggest hand, and an ovation, in fact, went to manager Casey Single as he was announced and ran out onto the field. Rogers Hornsby, a uh, native Texan, of course, got a tremendous hand as well, as did Sally Hemus, who lives here in Houston. Here's a swing and a ground ball, fielded by Hilmer, and he fires on to Boucher at first in time, and Mejia has grounded out to retire the side. Mejia's going from Hillman to Boucher, as the Colt 45s are out in order in the bottom half of the first inning, with no runs on, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. And at the end of one full inning of play, here in Houston, the score is the New York Mets nothing and the Houston Colt 45s nothing. And now to bring you up to date on scores of other games around the majors, here's Bob Murphy. All right, Lindsay, in the National League tonight at St. Louis, the Cardinals lead the Phillies 2-1 to one at the end of two and a half. Dennis Bennett hurling for the Phillies and Ray Washburn relieved Ernie Brolio in the first inning for the Cardinals. Roy Seavers a homer in the second, nobody on. Cincinnati and Milwaukee postponed rain. The Mets left there just in time. The weather beautiful while they were there. At the end of five and a half, the Pirates lead the Chicago Cubs five to four. Ellsworth for the Cubs. Tommy Sturdivant relieved Earl Francis for Pittsburgh in the third inning. Later tonight, San Francisco at Los Angeles on the West Coast. In the American League, at the end of seven, the Minnesota Twins lead Washington four to two as Camilo Pasquale tries for his sixth of the year. Ed Hobaugh relieved Dave Stenhouse in the seventh. Home runs in the game by Harmon Killebrew and Jim Pearsall, both of the bases clear. Cleveland seven, the Orioles six at the end of six. Home runs by Don Dillard, Woody Held, Jim Gentile, and Jackie Brand is hit too. Relief pitchers in that game now are Hoyt Wilhelm and Barry Latman. The starters were Skinny Brown and Mudcat Grant. At the end of six, Kansas City seven, the Red Sox four, Walker for the A's. Fornelli's in relief for the Red Sox. At the end of three, Detroit six, and the White Sox two. Boytak with Fisher on in relief of early win. Calavito, Fernandez, and Aparicio have homered. The Yankees and the Angels not scheduled. That's the complete rundown, and now here's Lindsay as we go along to the second. All right, Bob Murphy, thanks very much. Frank Thomas steps into the batter's box here. He has a batting average of 323 to lead the Mets in that department. He has 11 home runs and 27 runs batted in. Frank Thomas has hit safely in nine consecutive games. Was a big man in the Milwaukee series. 
Facing right-handed Jim Golden, who has a season's record of one victory and one loss. For the Houston Colt 45, Golden winds and fires. The pitch is high to Frank Thomas. It is ball one. This is the first game of a two-game set here in Houston. Same two teams will meet here again tomorrow night. We'll be on the air again tomorrow night as usual at 9.55 p.m. New York time. Here's a pitch to Thomas. Swung on, and it's a drive off the glove of shortstop Don Button. And Thomas is on at first base. A sharp liner, and uh, Button got his glove on it. But it bounded away. It scored as a base hit. It is scored as a base hit for Frank Thomas. And now he has hit safely in 10 consecutive ball games as Thomas gets the first base hit of the night. For the New York Mets, he is on his first, and Ed Boucher, the first baseman, is up. Boucher, a left-hand batter with a season's batting average of 204. That includes three home runs. Batting number five in manager Casey Singles batting order. Golan checks Thomas and deals to the plate, and the pitch is outside for ball one. Golden is a 26-year-old right-hander. He was one and one with the Dodgers in 1961. After he won 20 and lost only nine with St. Paul in 1960. Pitches in there for a call strike to Ed Boucher. Jim Golden was purchased in the National League player pool for $50,000 by the Houston Code 45. There is nobody out for the Mets batting here in the top half of the second inning. Here's a swing and a ground ball back to Golan. He fires to Button and the play goes on out to second base. He is safe there. And Bob Astromani had to back up Button. And both runners are safe. Runners at first and second. It's an error on the throw on Golan. An error on the throw. Fielder's choice and an error there as uh, the ground ball went right back to the mound. Golan turned to fire to Button, but the ball went on fast and Astromani fortunately was backing him up to keep it from going through. That held Thomas at second base. Boucher is on at first. And coming up is Charlie Neal, a right-hand batter. Charlie Neal has a season's batting average of 282. Thomas at second. Boucher at first. Still nobody out. Golden's pitch. Misses low and away for ball one to Charlie Neal. He looks down to Coach Salahim at the third to get a sign. Nothing, nothing ball game. Charlie Neal has four home runs. He had one of them yesterday. He had batted in 16 runs. The Mets, of course, were in Milwaukee yesterday where they swept both ends of a doubleheader. The Houston Colt 45s were in San Francisco where they split with the San Francisco Giants. Runners at first and second leading. Pitch to Neal. He shortens up to bunt but takes it low for ball two. Charlie Neal shortening up to attempt the sacrifice to move the runners up, but instead took it low for a ball, and it's 2-0. Felix Mantia has moved into the on-deck circle now for the New York Mets. Mantia has a batting average of 313. Again, Jim Golden is into the stretch. Here's the pitch, and it's right down to Pike for a call, strike one, and it was taken by Charlie Neal all the way. 2-1 and one now the count. First baseman Norm Larker defensively playing in on the edge of the grass in anticipation of a bunt attempt down toward first. This is a 2-1 pitch on the way, and it is bunted down the first baseline. Foul ball fielded by Larker. Off in foul territory. Thomas was all the way to third. And Ed Boucher was all the way to second. So the runners are returning, and the count to Charlie Neal will be two balls and two strikes. Game being played tonight at Cold Stadium here in Houston. An open-air stadium with no rooftop. But it's a warm night here in Houston tonight. The proposed new dome stadium will be located about a 1,000 yards from this particular area here in Houston. It's 2-2 pitch to Neal, and it's a ground ball to the right side going through for a base hit. Frank Thomas turns it third, and he's coming out as Mejia's comes up the throw to the plate. Thomas scores, and Boucher moves to third, and Charlie Neal goes to second on the throw to the plate. So gives Neal a single to right, and a run batted in. The Mets are out in front by a score of one to nothing, with runners now at second and third. Still nobody out. And coming up, Felix Mantia. 
Ball grounded through the hole on the right side. Into right field for a base hit off the bat of Charlie Neal. Scoring Frank Thomas in second. And when Mejias elected to go home with the throw, it came all the way. And Neal moved to second as Ed Boucher had moved to third. Mantia is a right-hand batter. The Mets out in front by a score of one to nothing here in the top half of the second inning. Mantia has two home runs this season. Wind blows out to left here, as Ralph kind of told you. Here's a curveball missing low and away. It's ball one. Catcher Sammy Taylor now on deck for the New York Mets. The Mets wasted no time in getting Joe Christopher into the lineup. He arrived here in Houston late this afternoon and started the ball game in right field, batting number three in Casey Singles' batting order. Here's a pitch to Mantia in there for a call strike. It is 1-1. Of course, when Gus Bell joined the Milwaukee Braves, they had to make room for him to get down to the 25-player limit, so they farmed out Mike Kresnick, a rookie outfielder. Here's the 1-1 pitch to Mantia, missing low and away. Four ball two, it's two and one. Ed Boucher, the base runner at third. Charlie Neal, the base runner at second. Right-hander Jim Golden looking in for a sign from catcher Hal Smith. Works for the windup. Pitch misses outside. It's three and one now to Mantia. Cookie Lavagetta coaching at first tonight for the Mets, of course, as usual. And Sally Hemus around at third. Sally makes his uh, off-season home here in Houston, Texas. Vinegar Ben Mizell got a tremendous ovation when he was introduced during the pregame introductions here, of course. He had uh, some great performances on behalf of the Houston Buffs in the Texas League during his minor league career. Here's a pitch inside, ball four. Mantilla has walked and the bases are loaded. Mantilla goes down to first. Charlie Neal holds it second. Ed Boucher is at third and coming up left-hand batter and catcher Sammy Taylor. Batting number eight in the batting order for the New York Mets. Batting average of 173. Now Dave Justy is working in the bullpen for the Houston Colt 45 as the Mets have loaded up the bases with nobody out and they have one run in here in the top half of the second inning. The full windup by Golden, the pitch, and it's low and away for ball one. Boucher at third, Charlie Neal at second, Felix Mantia at first. Again, Golden works for the windup. Pitch is low for ball two. It's 2-0 and oh now to Sammy Taylor. Hal Smith steps a few feet out in front of the plate to fire the ball back out to Jim Golden. This is a colorful ballpark. The various sections of the park painted in different colors. And, of course, with no roof uh, out in the open air, they are clearly visible. Bright colors. Here is a 2-0 pitch. To Taylor. Swung on at the drive. It's going down the right field line, but pulling over into foul territory and out of play. Well, Sammy Taylor picked on a 2 0 pitch and pulled it far down the right field line, but on over into foul territory and out of play. <laughs> so they count to him two balls and one strike. Bases loaded, nobody out. The Usher Rets here in the stadium are dressed in baseball uniforms uh, circa 1900 or along about there. Swing and a foul ball. Coming back and into the stands out of play. 2-2 two, two, the count now. To Sammy Taylor. This park, of course, is presumed to be a temporary stadium, Coast Stadium, to be used until the new air-conditioned dome stadium that is proposed uh, can be completed. Here is a 2-2 two, two pitch to Taylor. Swung out as a drive out of the left field. Al Spangler is going back. He takes it. Boucher tags it third and is coming out. He'll score easily. And Boucher comes across the plate, scoring after the catch. Uh, Taylor's drive to Spangler out and left. So the Mets are out in front by a score of two to nothing. Runners holding it first and second. One man out, and pitcher Dave Hillman is coming up. Sammy Taylor gets a sacrifice fly and a run batted in. Or getting Boucher across after the catch. 
Hillman is a right-hand batter. He's a right-hander all the way. 34 years old. And he's wearing number 34 on his back now. When the Mets started this road trip and uh, picked up his road uniform, he changed numbers. You'll recall uh, those of you who have seen him at the polo grounds, he wore number 27 there. He's wearing number 34 now. Dolan working with the stretch. Runners leading first and second. The pitch is uh, swung on and missed for strike one. One man out for the Mets in the top half of the second inning. Pitcher Jim Golden checks the runners. Set to work. Hillman bunts it off foul. Trying to sacrifice. It goes to strike two. You know, long before Colt Stadium was completed, the 45s had ticket orders from fans saying that they wanted seats where they could see inside the visitors' dugout. That's quite a few of those, and the Colt officials really couldn't figure it out until they got a letter from one fellow who said, I want to be where I can see Casey single. And uh, that's what they've come out for, a good many of them, and he got a tremendous ovation uh, when he first showed up here tonight. Two strike count to Hillman, runners at first and second take their leads. Golden into the stretch, here's the pitch. Swung out and missed for strike three. He stuck him out, two men out. That is strikeout number two this evening for Jim Golden. And we'll bring up leadoff man Jim Hickman. He's been up one time and struck out. There is a lot of west western atmosphere about this ball club on the road. The Cold 45 travel in western attire. There's a swing and a miss by Hickman at the plate. They retired right on down to the cowboy boots. Strike one is the count to right-hand batter Hickman, with Charlie Neal at second and Felix Mantia at first. And Elio Chacon now on deck with two men out. Swung on and has a fly ball out into left field. Spangler is coming on, and Al Spangler makes the catch coming in on the run to retire the side. So Hickman flies out to left and in the top half of the second inning. The New York Mets got two runs on two hits. There was one error and two men left on base. And so at the end of one and one-half innings of play in Houston, Texas, the score is the New York Mets 2 and the Houston Colts 45, nothing. Ever notice how a manager juggles his lineup until he comes up with a winner? He tries all his ball players and moves them around until he finds the right men for the right positions. And then he sticks with them. It makes sense in cigarette smoking, too. Try all seven leading filter cigarettes, and I'll bet your taste will tell you to stick with Viceroy. Because some cigarettes taste too strong. They might just as well not have a filter at all. And others taste too light. They take all the fun and flavor out of smoking. But when you smoke a Viceroy, you'll know you've come up with a winner because Viceroy is not too strong, not too light. Viceroy has got the taste that's right. If your filter cigarette is tasting too strong, don't you sometimes wonder if your brand is wrong? Well, Viceroy tastes the way it's like a filtered cigarette to taste. Not too strong. Not too light. Viceroy's got it. The taste that's right. That's right. That's right. This is Lindsay Nelson with Ralph Canner and Bob Murphy here at Coast Stadium in Houston, Texas where the Colt 45s will be coming up in the bottom half of the second inning with the Mets out in front now for the two-run lead. And it'll be Norm Larker, formerly of the Los Angeles Dodgers, leading up. Year before last, he hit 323 with the Dodgers, led National League batters for a good part of the year, and finished second in the batting race. He is a left-hand batter. For the Colt 45s, he is hitting 272. Bats cleaned up. He was in the batter's box, and that turns out and says something to... Ed Tudal, he wants uh, the umpire to look at the ball. Tudal looks at it and fires it right on back to pitcher Dave Hillman. Gold 45 just back from a seven-game road trip to the West Coast where they engaged the Dodgers and the Giants. Hillman winds and fires to Larker. It swung on and fouled on the third baseline. Foul ball fielded back there by Felix Mantilla. He was saying that there is quite a western atmosphere to this ball club. There's quite a Texas atmosphere, of course, to the ball club, as there should be. Manager Harry Kraft is from Throgmorton, Texas. General Manager Paul Richards is from Waxahachie, Texas. Coach Bobby Bregan has lived uh, for many years in Fort Worth, Texas. Here's a strike one pitch to Larker. 
Goes high for ball one. It's 1-1. One, one. Coach Jimmy Adair, who brought out the lineup cards for manager Harry Kraft, was born in Waxahachie, Texas, now lives in Carrollton, Texas. Pitching coach Cod Deal is from neighboring Oklahoma. One and one, the count to Norm Larker at the plate, leading off for the Houston Colt 45s in the second inning. He takes the fastball in there for a call strike and now takes a practice swing. Sorry you let that one go. He took a rip right after it had been called. It is one and two. This stadium costs a million and a half dollars and seats 32,221. That is the seating capacity. This will be a 1-2 pitch from Hillman to Larker. Swung on a ground ball to the right side. Charlie Neal has it on a big hop and he plays to Ed Boucher and Norm Larker has grounded out second to first. That will bring up Carl Warwick. Warwick was obtained by the Houston Gold 45s from the St. Louis Cardinals in the deal that sent pitcher Bobby Shantz to St. Louis. Warwick gets the hand. He was installed at, in center field right away when he got here. He's batting 270, he has three home runs, and he has batted in 11 runs. Dave Hillman, in his first start for the New York Mets, dips into the windup. Here's the pitch on the way. It is bunted down the third baseline. Pitcher Sammy Taylor has it. He fires on the first. Not in time, and the throw goes by. On down the line in right field. And Warwick is on his way to second. Joe Christopher up for the ball, and Warwick's on his way to third. Christopher fires it in, and Carl Warwick throws up at third base. It is a hit and an error. Scored as a base hit for Carl Warwick and an error on the throw by Sammy Taylor, the catcher. That is the first hit off Dave Hillman. The ball was bunted in front of the plate and slightly to the left side. Catcher Sammy Taylor out there pounced on it, had to pivot and fired on. It's doubtful whether he would have been able to get him. And the ball got away and went on down into right field and Warwick continued all the way to third before the ball could be retrieved by Joe Christopher. So now it is Carl Warwick at third. One man out and catcher Hal Smith coming up. He formerly of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Base hit for Warwick and error on Taylor on the play. Mets with a two-run lead. Keep the infield deep with one man out. Smith, of course, big right-hand batter. Pitches in there for a call strike. You'll recall uh, in the seventh game of the 1960 World Series in Pittsburgh, this fellow, Hal Smith, hit a home run over the left field wall that put the Pittsburgh Pirates out in front of the New York Yankees at the time. The Yankees later tied it up in the top of the ninth, and Bill Mazeroski won it for the Pirates in the bottom of the ninth to give them the World Championship. But here's the fellow who hit the big blow that got Pittsburgh back in the ballgame to begin with, Hal Smith. Tries to check it, but brings it around slowly, and it's strike two. A lot of fishing with the bat as he butted around, trying to hold back. But umpire Ed Sudol behind the plate says it's all the way around for a strike. Smith has a batting average of 253, including three home runs this season. Speaking of player personnel, Jim Busby started the season as a co-coach. He is now on the active player list for the Houston Co. 45s. Busby, of course, played for Ma general manager Paul Richards when Richards was field manager at Baltimore, and he also played for Richards at Chicago. He was an all-round athlete at Texas Christian University during his collegiate days. Here's a swing and a pop-up. Off the line at third. Mantilla is there. He takes the ball. He's out there two away now in order to allow our stations to identify themselves. We pause now for station identification. 810 on your dial. This is WGY, the General Electric Station, Schenectady. This is Lindsay Nelson with Bob Murphy and Ralph Kiner in Houston, Texas, where Hal Smith has just fouled out to Felix Mantia behind the bag at third. And coming up now for Houston, Bob Aspromani, up for his first time with two men out and a runner at third. The Mets leading by a score of two to nothing in the bottom half of the second inning. Aspromani is hitting 281. He has three home runs and has batted in 18 runs. Pitch is low for a ball to Aspermati. New York Mets, incidentally, have sent Marv Thornberry to Johns Hopkins uh, in Baltimore for examination and possible treatment of a knee that has bothered him. So Thornberry is not available for duty tonight or in this series. The 
Leading down the line at third is base runner Carl Warwick. Pitch is low and away. It's ball two now to Bob Astromani, who bats number seven in the batting order. The manager, Harry Kraft, of the Houston Colt 45. Houston players on the front of their caps uh, have the 45 instead of coat. As they want to impress upon you the fact that they are guns and not uh, animals. Here's a 2-0 pitch to Astromani. It's low for ball three. So Dave Hillman has gone out 3-0 to Astromani with Don Budden on deck now. For Houston. Code 45 has got off uh, to an amazing start this season. They opened up with a three-game sweep of the series with the Chicago Cubs. It's 3-0 pitch. In there for a call, strike one. Three and one to ask for money. Ask for money, swinging the bat, waiting for the pitch from Dave Hillman. He works for the full windup. Here's the pitch swung on and popped up. In foul territory, Taylor's coming back, may have a play. Sammy Taylor waiting, and he takes it for the out. That retires the side. As Astromani has fouled out to the catcher, and the Colt 45s are out in the bottom half of the second inning with no run on one hit. There was one error and one man left on base. And so at the end of two complete innings of play in Houston, Texas, the score is the New York Mets 2 and the Houston Colt 45s nothing. Well, the New York Mets will be taking on uh, Houston right here again tomorrow night. We'll be on the air at 9.55 p.m. New York time. And then the Mets will move into Los Angeles to take on the Los Angeles Dodgers Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. Saturday afternoon game in San Francisco against the Giants. A Sunday doubleheader in San Francisco against the Giants. We'll be broadcasting all of those games, of course. And then the Mets will come home for a big Memorial Day doubleheader against the Los Angeles Dodgers at the Polo Grounds, followed by a night game the following night. And then the San Francisco Giants follow the Dodgers in. If you'd like to purchase tickets for any of those games or any future games to be played by the Mets at the Polo Grounds this season, you can do that at a number of convenient locations, east side, west side, or all around the town. There's a Mets ticket office in Grand Central Station at the foot of the Vanderbilt Avenue wrap. There's another Mets ticket office in Pennsylvania Station at the Long Island Waiting Room. There's a ticket office open at the Polo Grounds seven days a week. You can order your tickets by mail addressing your request to Ticket Manager, Polo Grounds, New York, 39 New York, box seats 350, reserve seats 250. Enclosed 25 cents additionally for postage and handling, or you can make ticket reservations at any Howard Clothes store in the greater New York area. Coming in here right now is Bob Murphy. Thank you, Lindsay. Elio Chacon now to lead off against right-hander Jim Golden. The game moving along to the third with the Mets in front, two to nothing. Golden out of his windup. Starts him off with a curve, but it's outside and low. One ball and no strikes. Joe Christopher will be batting next, and then Frank Thomas. Now Elio wants Ed Sudol to examine the ball. Sudol looking it over, then puts it back in play as he takes it out to Jim Golden. Now Golden cranks up, around comes the arm. He bluffs in a bunt, and the pitch is over, a call strike. One ball, one strike on Elio Chacon. Elio hitting a 257. 0 for 1 tonight, he hit a pop fly taken by a second base finesse for Monty, his first time up. Pitching one and one. Drives him back from the plate. He had to twist and turn away, and the count is two and one. Now Jim Golden looking into Hal Smith to pick up his sign. Nobody on, nobody out. We're in the top of the third. Mets in front, two to nothing. He again bluffs at a bunt, then takes it. It's out of the strike zone. Three and one on Elio Chacon. Ilio has a lot of speed. He's a threat to bunt, and many times he'll bluff that threat. Keep that third baseman, Billy Goodman, in close. Three and one, the count now on Chacon. And the pitch by Golden. A little bit inside, it's ball four, and Chacon walks. There is the second walk given up by Jim Golden. It brings up Joe Christopher. Joe checking in with the New York Mets just shortly before game time, getting his uniform on and all set to go. 
And now Christopher wants Ed Sudol to examine the ball. <laughs> Joe, right hand batter. Has good speed and he can hit with power. Norm Larker holding against Chacon now. Goodman in close to third. A foul ball off to the right, no play. He went after a curve ball, hit late. The Mets now have won nine of their last 12 games. Now Hal Smith crashed behind the plate. Budden and Aspermani set up a double play to have Goodman in close at third. A throw to first, not in time. <laughs> Joe Christopher, the wagon that bat around, now cocks it. The pitch by Jim Golden. He bluffs the bunt, takes the pitch, and it's off the outside edge. One ball and one strike. The last two weeks, the Houston Colt 45s have been playing nothing but the Dodgers and the Giants. They've had a tough assignment. They played 14 straight games with them. And of course, right after this series, the New York Mets will have 13 consecutive games with the Dodgers and Giants. Throw to first, Elio diving back in head first. On this road trip, the Mets will play three in Los Angeles, three in San Francisco, then fly home to New York, to play three with the Dodgers and four with the Giants. Strike on the outside corner. Good one by Jim Golden on the count. One ball and two strikes to Joe Christopher. Charlie Neal and Sammy Taylor each knocking in a run on the top of the second. And the Mets lead two to nothing. Right-hander Golden checks the runner. The pitch curve outside and low. And the count is even two balls and two strikes. Golden didn't get a chance to pitch a great deal for the Dodgers last year who have one of the deepest pitching staff in baseball. But he was considered an outstanding young pitcher in their organization. A 20 game winner in triple A year before last. Elio Chacon leading off first base. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Ball three. It's outside and low. And now the string is out. Three and two on Joe Christopher. Now let's keep an eye on Elio Chacon and see if the New York Mets have anything going. Now they're going to send the sign down to the bullpen and we'll have some warm-up action again for the Colt 45. Elio Chacon grabs his lead. There he goes. The pitch is swung on and fouled back to the backstop. Christopher literally had to throw his bat at that one to protect Elio Chacon. And the bat sailed out of his hands and down towards Sally Hemus coaching in third. Once again, Dave Justy has been given the sign to start getting ready for the Colt 45. Now Jim Golden checking with his battery mate Hal Smith as Elio Chacon takes the lead. And the throw to first is not in time. There goes Chacon. The ground ball hit down to third, and it is a foul ball. Foul ball. Christopher running it out. But it was a foul ball and a very close one. Well, we have our first final score of the night. Camilo Pasquale won his sixth game of the year against two losses. As the Minnesota Twins beat Washington 5-3 with Dave Stenhouse, the rookie, losing his first game of the year. Harmon Killebrew and Jim Carousel hit home runs in that game. Minnesota five runs on ten hits and no errors. Washington three runs, eight hits and one error. Over the weekend, the Twins and the Yankees split their four-game series in New York. Elio Chacon was running on three and two for the second time. Now Jim Golden up in pitching position. Chacon holds up, the pitch is swing and miss, strike three, and once again that bat slips down to Joe's hands, and the bat winds up out by Don Budd in the shortstop. But that time the Mets did not have Chacon running. Uh, 
That is the third strikeout for right hander Jim Golden. And it brings up Frank Thomas. Frank wasted no time extending his consecutive game batting streak. He got a base hit off Button's glove with a smash in the second. So Frank now has hit safely in 10 straight ball games. He's brought his batting average up to a healthy 328. He went on a real rampage at County Stadium in Milwaukee over the weekend. In the four games, Frank had eight hits and 18 trips. He hit three homers and he knocked seven runs in. Ground ball hit down to third. Goodman fires to second for one. After money to Larker, double play. Veteran Billy Goodman starting the double play on the grounder hit right down to third. He was playing him over to the line and came up with the ball right on the bag. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left. At the end of two and a half innings, the score, the Mets two and the Colt 45s nothing. You know, there are many things we call perennials. Some flowers, books, or songs that are old favorites. In fact, well, anything that we enjoy year after year. In New York, I'd say that term applies to Rheingold. Year after year, people continue to enjoy the brisk, bright taste that is Rheingold's alone. And year after year after year, Rheingold is the largest selling beer in New York. Now, you don't have to look very far to find the secret of Rheingold's popularity. The answer is right in the name, Rheingold Extra Dry. Yes, sir, the two biggest words in beer, extra dry, tell you why Rheingold has a taste no other beer can match. Because it's dry, Rheingold is more naturally refreshing. It has more of that crisp, clean flavor you want in a beer. What a wonderful difference dry makes. Why not enjoy a glass of Rheingold along with the game and taste the difference for yourself? Now, Don Button, the shortstop of the Colt 45s, will lead off against Dave Hickman in the last half of the third... Dave Hillman in the last half of the third inning. Dave Winding pitched to Button a strike on the outside corner. Button got off to a good start. He beat the Mets a ball game in the polo grounds with a three-run homer in the 11th inning, but then he went into a batting slump. Dave Hellman cranking up. In comes his pitch. Breaking ball outside and low. One ball and one strike. Dave Hellman and Don Button were teammates for the Boston Red Sox last year. Button, right-hand batter. For five years, he was the regular shortstop with the Red Sox. That's a strike on the outside corner. One ball and two strikes. Of course, playing at Fenway Park, he was in a small ballpark, and a ballpark very helpful to left-hand pole hitters. And over the years, he tried to adjust his style so they could become a pole hitter to take advantage of that wall. Now, in this big ballpark, they have been working with him, trying to get him to hit straight away, hit the ball where it's pitched. Just off the outside corner. That one didn't miss by much. Two balls and two strikes. We'll bring you right up to date on all the scores of the other games at the end of the inning. Count two and two on Don Button. In comes the pitch to him. A little bit low. Ball three, and it's a full count three and two. Nobody on, nobody out. Last half of the third. Mets two and the Colt 45s nothing. Here's the wind-up 3-2 pitch. A drive in the air to right center field. It's toward the alley and it's in for a base hit. It is rolling all the way back to the wall and just in right center field. Christopher tracking it down, throwing to Charlie Neal. Button is going into third, standing up with a triple. Don Button hitting a line drive up the alley in right center between Jim Hickman and Joe Christopher. And that ball rolled out 427 feet from home plate. So the Colts, who have been working very hard with Button trying to get him to go with the pitch, found some dividends there as he hit the ball to right center field. Now Jim Golden comes up. Let's see how the Mets play it defensively. Mantilla, even with the bag, wide of the line at third. Otherwise, the infield will be back and around toward right. Hillman winding, down comes his pitch. Swing and a miss on a curve, strike one.
Down Button on third. Nobody out last half of the third inning. Full windup by Hillman. Here's his pitch. Slow bounder hit foul off to the right. No play. Well, here are the warm-ups now for the big game on the West Coast. For the San Francisco Giants, it will be Billy O'Dell. And for the Los Angeles Dodgers, Sandy Koufax. And you can bet there will be a big crowd at Dodger Stadium for that game tonight between those two red-hot West Coast teams. Over the weekend, the Cardinals swept the series from the, uh, the Dodgers. By sweeping the series, they dropped the Dodgers to third. Two strike delivery. He lays off of it. It's up high. One ball and two strikes. But on third, nobody out. The pitcher, Jim Golden, batting. He's hitting left-handed. Al Spangler on deck and then Billy Goodman. Now Dave taking his time. Looks in, has his sign. Winds and pitches. A ground ball slowly hit down the first baseline. Boucher up with it over to Hillman in time, and the run is in. Jim Golden hitting a slow grounder down to Ed Boucher. They had no chance at all to try for anything at the plate. So give Golden an RBI, and it's now a two to one ball game. The Mets in front. One away, nobody on. The hitter is Al Spangler, the leadoff batter. Spangler hitting at 264. Retired on a pop fly to short his first time up tonight. Runs up, bumps the ball, a beauty down the third baseline. No play, he beats it out of base hit. Beauty of a bunt by Al Spangler. He ran up to bunt the ball. And on the run, he dumped that bunt right down the third baseline. By the time Mantilla could try to get a fair hand on it, he had no chance whatsoever. And it's a base hit for the very speedy Al Spangler. That brings up Billy Goodman. Billy cut adrift by the Chicago White Sox at the end of spring training, catching on with the Houston Colt 45. Billy, a line drive hitter. And for years, with the Red Sox, he was one of the game's top hitters. Throw to first, not in time. He has to dive back in. <laughs> Billy Goodman, after 15 years, is a lifetime 300 hitter. Next pitch. Fastball over a call strike. It's all over tonight at Fenway Park. The Kansas City A's with Jerry Walker going the route to win his fifth of the year have beaten the Boston Red Sox 10-5. to 5. Jose Askew, Jerry Walker, and Eddie Brissou had home runs in that game. The A's win it over the Red Sox 10-5. to 5. Gene Conley, the losing pitcher. Now throw to first, not in time. Billy Goodman, left-hand batter, wags that batter out. Now the pitch by Hellman, a swing and a miss. The runner goes to peg the second is in the dirt. And the runner is in safely with a stolen base. Al Spangler sets himself up in scoring position. As he steals second, the throw by Sammy Taylor was in the dirt. And Elio Chacon crossing over on the right side of the infield made a good play to come up with it. Two-strike count on Billy Goodman. Interesting thing about Billy Goodman is the fact that for the last seven years he has failed to hit 300. But his first eight years in the major leagues, he hit so well that he is still a lifetime 300 hitter. Goodman 0 for 1 in the game, flying to left his first time up. Now the Colt 45s have the tying run. Al Spangler on second, one man down. Now Hellman checks the runner. Pickoff play, no throw is made. He whirled, but realizing that the runner Spangler was back in there, did not make the throw. <laughs> now 
Now the two-strike pitch. Foul ball back up toward the crowd. This will be out of play. <laughs> well, President George M. Weiss is here in Houston watching the game tonight, seated right behind the New York Mets dugout. <laughs> this is the opener of a two-game series, a night game tomorrow night, then the flight to the West Coast for three games with the Dodgers, then three over the weekend with the Giants, then back to New York. Now Dave Hillman makes the slow stretch, the one-second stop. And the pitch to Goodman, outside and low, he lays off of it. One ball and two strikes. <laughs> Billy Goodman batting second in the order. Ramon Mejias, the right fielder, waiting on deck. Now Spangler with a lead off second. Chacon chases him back. The pitch is a line drive over second. A base hit the center field. Around third, heading in is Spangler. Here comes the throw to the plate. Cut off by Boucher, but no chance for a play at second. Billy Goodman tying up the game. Line drive single to center field. And when Jim Hickman threw to the plate, Boucher cut the throw off when he realized it could not get Al Spangler, but he did not have time to fire to second to get Billy Goodman, so Goodman goes to second on the throw to the plate. Now we're going to have some warm-up action in the bullpen for the New York Mets, and it's going to be Wilmer Vinegar Ben Mizell. Game tied, 2-2, the batter Ramon Mejias. Right-hand hitter waiting. He holds up and the pitch breaks outside, ball one. Mejias leads the Houston Cole 45s in home runs with eight and RBIs with 22. He's hitting 296. Grounded out, pitcher to first in the first inning. Houston two runs on three hits here in the last half of the third. Pitch by Hellman, a fastball outside, ball two, two and oh. Dave Hellman, veteran right-hander, making his first start for the Mets, trying to work his way out of a tough jam now here in the third inning. Don Budden started the uprising with a triple to right center field. He scored on Jim Golden's ground ball to first. Spangler bunted for a hit, stole second, scored on Goodman's hit. A high fly ball to left center field, and this one is deep. Out goes Jim Hickman by the fence. He makes the catch. Tagged up as Goodman, and he'll go to third after the catch is made. That ball was caught 425 feet from home plate by Jim Hickman. Ball hit high and deep to the deepest point of the ballpark, and it's a big ballpark in left center field, just a little bit off to the left of center. And Hickman had his back right up against the fence when he took it. Ramon Mejias really tied into that one. And Billy Goodman, who was not fast to foot, was able to tag at second and easily go to third after the catch. Now we have a conference at the mound, and while Boucher and Sammy Taylor are talking to the pitcher, and here comes Casey Stingle out of the dugout. Casey's going to make a trip to the mound. So while Casey moves out to the mound, we'll take time to pause for station identification. This is your New York Mets station in Schenectady, WGY, 810 on your radio dial. Bob Murphy with Lindsey Nelson and Rob Kinder from Colt Stadium. Casey Stengel has moved to the mound, and Wilmer Mizell is going to be brought on. And listen to the ovation when his name is announced. Because Vinegar Bend, on the way to the major leagues, had quite a year here in Houston back in 1951, when he won 16 games as the... Houston Buffs, as they were then known in the Texas League, won the pennant and went on to the Dixie Series. Vinegar won 16 that year. Always colorful, but never a character by any means. One of the nicest guys in baseball. Dave Hellman leading the game, and Vinegar Ben Mizell takes over. Bill 
Seven leaving after pitching two and two-thirds innings. At the moment, he has given up two runs. Allowed four hits. Walk none and struck out none. This year, Vinegar Bend has won one and lost one. Here's the announcement now for Mazel. Wilmer Mizell, a big left-hander from Vinegar Bend, Alabama. Vinegar Bend won a game from the New York Mets while he was with Pittsburgh back on April 15th. His only loss came at the hands of the San Francisco Giants on the 30th of April, a game that he lost 4-1 to one and worked four innings. With the Mets, Vinegar Bend has appeared twice. He relieved against the Milwaukee Braves and started against the Chicago Cubs. That was the game that was to go five hours 13 innings and be won dramatically by the New York Mets. They won the game, racing the clock to beat the curfew. Fans, remember now that tickets are on sale for all remaining home games at the Polo Grounds for your convenience at the advanced ticket window on 8th Avenue at the Polo Grounds, as well as Grand Central Station at the 42nd and Vanderbilt Ramp and the Long Island waiting room at the Penn Station. Box seats are $3.50, reserve seats are $2.50. If you order your tickets by mail, include 25 cents for postage and handling. Remember, too, that ticket reservations may be made at all Howard Close stores in the New York area. Of course, the New York Mets open their homestand on the 30th, Memorial Day, with a doubleheader against the Dodgers. Play the Dodgers Thursday night, the 31st. Then the Giants, Friday night, June 1. Big doubleheader on Saturday, June 2nd. And a Sunday day game on June 3rd. Then they will go on the road for a very brief trip to Philadelphia and Chicago and come right back to New York to open a homestand on June 15th. Three teams will be coming in on that homestand starting on the 15th of June, the Chicago Cubs, the Milwaukee Braves, and the Houston Colt 45. Now the hitter is Norm Larker facing Wilmer Mizell. Billy Goodman on third, two down. Outside and low, it's ball one. Two years ago, when the Buckos won the pennant, Mizell was quite a factor for Danny Murtaugh's team. Norm Larker is hitting at 269. The year the Pirates won the pennant, Norm Larker battled Dick Grode right down to the wire for the National League Batting Championship. Infield a step toward right as Vinegar Ben cranks up the pitch. Ground ball bounced towards second. Big hop taken by Charlie Neal. He throws to Boucher and the side is out. Tied out in the last half of the third inning, but the Colt 45s tie it up. Two runs on three hits. No errors, one left on. And now at the end of three, the score, the Mets two and the Colt 45s two. And while the teams are changing sides, let's get together with Ralph Kiner for the run of the scoreboard. Okay, Bob Murphy, Philadelphia playing in St. Louis at the end of five and a half innings, and the Cardinals out in front two to one. Pitching for the Cardinals now, Washburn, and going for the Philadelphia Phillies Green. Seavers had a home run in the second. White has picked up a home run now in the bottom of the sixth. So now the Cardinals lead at least four to one in that ball game. This and that had Milwaukee postponed rain. Chicago playing at Pittsburgh. And the score of that game in Pittsburgh's favor after seven and one and a half innings, six to four. Sturdivant now in relief of Francis for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Anderson has relieved Ellsworth for the Chicago Cubs. San Francisco at Los Angeles just getting underway. Odell is going for the Giants and pitching for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Their strikeout out is Sandy Koufax. Over in the American League, Minnesota defeated Washington 5-3 behind the fine pitching of Pasquale, an eight-hitter. He has now won his sixth game of the season while losing two. The losing pitcher was Stenhouse for the Washington Senators. Killebrew and Pierce saw a home run. Baltimore at Cleveland and Baltimore out in front actually tied up now at 7-7 seven seven after eight and a half. Kansas City defeated Boston 10-5, Detroit 7, Chicago nothing at the end of 5.5, and, and here we go. Ed Boucher batting against Jim Golden, and he fouls the ball off. Boucher reached safely on a fielder's choice and later came in to score his first time up. So Ed is 0 for 1, batting an even 200. Right-hander Jim Golden into his windup, down comes his pitch. Breaking ball over, strike two call. Enthusiastic crowd turning out here at Cole Stadium to welcome the Cole 45s back from their West Coast trip.
Have a two-strike pitch. A little bit of high. One ball and two strikes. Tomorrow night, Harry Kraft will be firing the ace of his pitching staff against the New York Mets. Mets will be hitting against one of the hardest throwers in baseball in Turk Farrell. Farrell has won three and lost three. He struck out Willie Mays to save a game for the Colt 45 yesterday. Change up, bounced slowly down the first baseline, a fair ball. Pounced on by Hal Smith, thrown to first in time for the out. Boucher uh, kind of pulled up. He thought the ball was going to go foul, but it stayed fair. He turned on the speed, but is thrown out by Hal Smith. One away, nobody on. That brings up Charlie Neal. The last three games of that series in Milwaukee, Charlie came up with five hits and 13 times up, and he knocked five runs in. Charlie singled to right field, driving a run in his first time up tonight. A drive towards short, caught by Don Budden. Two outs, nobody on, a line drive, hit right at the shortstop. Neal was hitting 288 as he came up with 17 RBIs. Now Felix Mantilla batting for the second time. Felix drew a walk from Jim Gold in his first time up. Sammy Taylor moving out in the on-deck circle. Breaking ball in there, a strike call. Since the Houston club just played the Giants over the weekend, we were asking Harry Kraft for some of his evaluations of the ball club. And he feels the play of Chuck Hiller and Jose Pagan has made the Giants into a real solid ball club. A high foul fly hit deep down the left field line, and this will be out of play. The Cleveland Indians have been hitting home runs at a tremendous rate. They had hit 25 home runs in their last eight ball games. Tonight, Honey Romano hit a three-run homer in the last of the ninth inning, and Cleveland pulled that game out, beating the Baltimore Orioles by a score of 10-7. They have three home runs in the game tonight. Ground ball hit down to third by Mantilla. Billy Goodman up with it. Takes across to Norm Larker, and the side is out. No runs, no hits, no errors, then left on. At the end of three and a half innings, the score, the Mets two and the Colt 45s two. Coming up now, a melody with an old world flavor. Dick Damone saying, down on Mulberry Street, far and near, the one they like is Rheingold beer. Rheingold in a beer on the bed, que delicia for ted la gode. Do chamara non è, ma per petta lo è, comperate la Rheingold teste. Italian and English have the same word for refreshment, Rheingold. Remember that name when you want beer that's brisk and bright and clean, clear through. Dry tells you why. Rheingold is brewed the long, slow, costlier way. It's New York's favorite. It's beer as beer should taste. My beer is Rheingold, the dry beer. Think of Rheingold whenever you buy beer. It's not bitter, not sweet. It's the dry flavor treat. Won't you try extra dry Rheingold beer? Ciao. Here's the line score on the Cleveland-Baltimore game. Cleveland, 10 runs on 11 hits, including three home runs. Hit by Don Dillard. Woody Held and the game-winning home run by John Romano. Baltimore, 7-13-0. Billy Hutz was the loser. He came on in the eighth inning, and the winning pitcher in relief was Barry Latman. For the Orioles, Jim Gentile connected. Jackie Brandt hit two, and Russ Snyder hit one. Cleveland winning 10-7 over Baltimore. Minnesota beat Washington 5-3. Kansas City beat Boston 10-5. Way up high, ball one to Carl Warwick. Yankees and the Angels not scheduled. The only other game going now in the American League is at Comiskey Park. Tigers leading the White Sox 7-2 to two at the end of five and a half. Carl Warwick checks up on a changeup. It goes out to the mound, picked up by Vinegar Bend. He throws to first, one down. Warwick didn't mean to hit that when he was trying to hold up. It was a good changeup that caught him off stride. So it's one away, nobody on, and brings up the catcher, Hal Smith. One of the very first things that Paul Richards did when he took over in the dual role as general manager and field manager of the Baltimore Orioles 
was to trade for Hal Smith. That was the trade in which he gave up Larson and Turley. Here's the windup. Down comes the pitch. A high fly ball to deep center. Gliding back goes Jim Hickman. He's under it waiting. Draws a beat on it and puts it away for the out. So it's two up and two set aside by Vinegar Bend in the last half of the fourth inning. The batter now will be Bob Aspermani. Aspermani hitting 279. Aspermani fouled out to Sammy Taylor his first time up. Game tied 2-2. Two two. We're in the last of the fourth inning. Fast ball over. Strike one call. Now Vinegar with that big windup. Down comes his pitch. A let up curve. Just misses the outside corner. One ball and one strike. Mizell gives you a lot of motion. He takes advantage of that height. And although he no longer throws that real blazing fastball as he did in his younger days, he knows what he's doing out there. Fastball too high. Two balls and a strike. Lumen Harris and Jimmy Adair on the coaching line. Mets with the infield and the outfield straight away. Right in there, a breaking pitch for a strike, two and two. Houston, two runs on four hits. The New York Mets, two runs on two hits. Each team has had two left on. Now, Sammy Taylor, I believe, calls Ed Sudol's attention to the stance of Bob Aspermani and... Sudol draws the line, the restraining line, to make sure he's in the batter's box. No pitch on it. A line drive hit on the nose to left. This is in for a base hit. Frank Thomas up with the ball on the skip, fires it into Elio Chacon, and Aspermani is on with a single to left field. There is the first hit given up by Mizell, and it brings up Don Budden. Budden slashed a line drive up the alley in right center field for a three-base hit in the third inning. He came in to score on Jim Golden's ground ball to first. Mizell up in pitching position. Delivers a curve. The runner goes to peg the second. The ball goes into center field on a wide throw. On his way to third now is Astronauti, and he'll pull in there standing up. Colts on the run in the game. And Aspermani goes all the way around to third when Sammy Taylor's throw is wide and sails into center field. It'll be a stolen base and an error charge. And now the Colt 45s have Aspermani on third with two men down. Now Jim Mule, the trainer of the Houston club, comes out of the dugout to check with Aspermani to see whether or not he might have pulled a muscle on running that out, but apparently not. Second stolen base in the game for the Colt 45. Spangler stole second in the third inning. Here's the pitch. Inside and low, two balls and no strikes to Don Budden. Button right hand hitter, Mets flame straight away. Two men down as Aspermani leads off third. Way outside, it's ball three, and Mizell goes behind 3 0 on Don Button. Jim Golden, the pitcher, a right hand pitcher, but a left hand batter, is due up next. Strike called, caught the outside corner, 3 and 1. Three and one now to Don Button. Game tied 2-2, last half of the fourth inning. 3-1 pitch. 
strike, two call, Budden taking again, and now the string is out, three and two. He actually started to go on that one and then held up. Full count, three and two. Mizell winding, here's the payoff pitch. Outside, he let up on it. It missed just outside, ball four, Budden walks, and that'll bring up Jim Golden. Well, the Pittsburgh Pirates on a tremendous relief job by Tommy Sturdivant beat the Chicago Cubs tonight, eight to four. Sturdivant came on in the third inning and pitched scoreless ball the remainder of the way as the Pirates won it eight to four. Eight runs on 13 hits and no errors. Chicago, four runs, 10 hits and one error. Sturdivant the winner, he relieved the starter, Earl Francis in the third. Dick Ellsworth, the loser, is now three and five. The Reds and Milwaukee Braves rained out tonight in Milwaukee. They're underway now in L.A. The Giants did not score in the first off Sandy Koufax. Billy O'Dell pitching for the Giants. Now Houston, runners at the corners, two men down. The batter is Jim Golden, left-hander against left-hander. Taken high, one ball, no strikes. Vinegar Bend with runners on first and third, two men down. Makes the one second stop. Here's his pitch. Drives the hitter back from the plate. Two balls and no strikes down to Jim Golden. Golden batting for the second time. He knocked a run in when he grounded out to the first baseman in the third inning. Button came in to score on the slow bounder. Now Mizell behind on the count. Pitches 2-0. Oh. That's in there. Strike one call. 2-1. and one. They had the pitcher Golden taking all away. Asper Money leading off third. Budden leads off first. Pitching 2-1. and one. A smash on the ground taken by Ed Boucher. Flips the ball over to second for the force play retiring the side. The ball was hit kind of funny, kind of a soft liner. And Boucher, going off to his right, got it on the first hop. And as he got it, he was facing towards second. So rather than turn around and make the awkward throw to the pitcher coming over to cover, he just flipped the ball over to Elio Chacon to get a force play for the third out. In the fourth inning, no runs, one hit, one error, and two left on. And now at the end of four, the score, the Mets two and the Houston Colts 45 two. Tomorrow night winds up this two-game series, and then for the next 13 straight games, the New York Mets will be playing the Los Angeles Dodgers and the San Francisco Giants. They will play Wednesday night, Thursday night, and Friday night in Los Angeles this week. Then play Saturday afternoon and a big doubleheader next Sunday in San Francisco. The following Monday and Tuesday will be open dates as the New York Mets return to New York to open their seven games in five days against the Dodgers and the Giants at the Polo Grounds, starting with the Memorial Day doubleheader on the 30th. Make your ticket plans now at the advanced ticket window at the Polo Grounds on 8th Avenue, 155th Street. Or you can get your tickets at Grand Central Station, the 42nd and Vanderbilt Ramp, or the Long Island waiting room of the Penn Station. Ticket reservations, too, may be made at all Howard closed stores in the New York area. Now we're going along to the fifth inning. The New York Mets coming up against right-hander Jim Golden. And coming up now to detail every exciting play for you, Ralph Kiner. Ralph? Thank you, Bob Murphy. And the first batter is Sammy Taylor, left-hander batter. And Jim Golden, the right-hander, into the windup. And the first pitch to Taylor is fouled away, strike one. Taylor batting 173 for the year. He drove in one of the two runs by the New York Mets. That was on a sacrifice fly to left field. Taylor will be followed by the pitcher, Mizell. There's no one throwing in the bullpen for the New York Mets. And then the leadoff man, Jim Hickman. Jim Golden, through four innings, has given up two runs on only two hits. He has struck out three and walked two. A one-strike pitch to Taylor. A check in the swing and a little pop foul into the lower box seats here at cold stadium. This is a stadium that's actually a temporary stadium. They have a bond issue set up now to build a dome stadium which will run somewhere around $20 million. 
single deck stadium with no roof. Count now, no balls and two strikes to Sammy Taylor. And the next pitch to him is high, ball one. One ball, two strikes. In fact, about a thousand yards away from this ballpark, there's a big hole where they started to do the groundwork for the stadium. Work has been held up now, and there's some difficulty about where the money's going to come from. One two pitch to Taylor, a swung on foul back on the screen. So the count will hold at one and two. The Mets got off the two runs in the second inning. That was the lead. And Houston dad it up in the bottom half of the third. It stayed that way now. Through the fourth, we're starting the top of the fifth. Jim Golden to Sammy Taylor. And the pitch is taken. Call strike three. So Golden picks up his fourth strikeout on the curveball. Sammy Taylor watches it go by. And the batter now do up is Vinegar Ben Mizell. Curveball. Sammy Taylor watches it go by. And the batter now do up is Vinegar Ben Mizell. Mizell coming out of the dugout to bat. Golden was the outstanding pitcher in the American Association in 1960. He led the league in games pitched 32, complete games 14. He won 20 that year. Pitched a total of 237 innings. He's not fast, but he throws a lot of breaking pitches. He has good control. Last year, he was with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Won one and lost one. He worked in only 28 ball games, a total of 42 innings. He was drafted from the Los Angeles Dodgers. Here is Vinegar and Mizell, a right-handed batter. He throws left-handed. And he is batting for the first time. Jim Golden to Mizell, a sharply hit ball in the center field of base hit. Mizell going with long strides down to first base. Holds there as the ball is misplayed by the center fielder, but he picks it up and throws it on in. Carl Warwick in center field, holding Mizell at first. That's the third base hit off Golden as Mizell picks up his first. And the batter now, Jim Hickman. Hickman struck out and fought out to left field in two tries. He's batting 274. Time call as Mizell puts on a jacket. It was a warm day here in Houston, about 86 degrees. And still a warm night, but just a little bit of chill in the air, not too much. Now Jim Hickman, a right-handed batter in center field. In the batter's box, and the first pitch to him, a slider that's low outside, ball one. In yesterday's sweep by the Mets over the Milwaukee Braves, Hickman had a very important double. Scored the time run in the second game. 1-0 pitch, a called strike, as Golden comes back with another breaking pitch. One ball, one strike. One out to score, 2-2. Golden, six foot tall, doesn't look that big from here, but 175 pounds. A 1 1 pitch to Hickman, swung on and foul back of home plate. So the count will go to one ball and two strikes. The on deck batter, Edie Chacon. This is a big ballpark, 360 down the left field line, just towards the left side of center field, 427, and straight away center, 420, but a high wall there. Just to the right of center, 427, and then again, 360 down the right field line. The next pitch to Hickman, a curveball outside, ball two. Two balls and two strikes. Only two balls have been hit into the right field seats over the right field fence in this ballpark in its history. And that by Renew, a catcher in the ball club. Wind blows in from right field. A 2-2 pitch line down the left field line, but foul. So the count of hold at two balls and two strikes. The scoreboard keeps the averages of the ball players right on the board. They don't keep them up to date time at bat, but at the start of the game, and strangely enough, or not strangely enough, ball players don't like this. Next pitch to Hickman has popped up down the first piece side. Larker coming over by the dugout is there and he makes the catch. So Larker making the catch right in front of the visiting dugout for out number two and the batter now is Elias Chacon. Score the game, the New York Mets two runs on three hits, the Houston Colt 45, two runs on five.
Elio popped up to the second baseman and walked, so he's 0 for 1 in the series here to date. Batting 257. The calm playing at shortstop, a right-handed batter. Jim Golden with his first pitch outside with a slider, ball one. One ball, no strike. Al Smith, the catcher at first base, Norm Harker. At second base, Bob Aspermani. At shortstop, Don Button. The third baseman is Billy Goodman. Left fielder, Al Spangler. The center fielder, Carl Warwick. Right fielder, Roman Mejiaz. 1-0 pitch to Chacon. Popped up down the first base side in foul territory. Locker coming over to about the same spot. And he makes the catch to retire the side. So for the New York Mets in their half of the fifth inning, no runs on one hit. There were no errors by the Colt 45. One man left in the score. At the end of four and one half innings of play. The New York Mets, too. The Houston Colts, too. Now, here's your chance to enjoy 60 seconds of uninterrupted music. Brought to you by New York's favorite beer, Rheingold Extra Dry. Now, as we pause right now for station identification. 810 on your dial. This is WGY, the General Electric Station, Schenectady. Ralph Kiner along with Lindsey Nelson and Bob Murphy from Colt Stadium in Houston, Texas in the first game ever between the Colt 45s and the New York Mets in Houston. And we're moving to the bottom half of the fifth as Mizell goes in the windup and his first pitch to Al Spanger is outside ball one. Vinegar Ben Mizell who came in the ball game in relief of Dave Hillman with two out in the third inning. So far he has given up no runs, only one hit. He has struck out none and walked one. Big left-hander acquired from the Pittsburgh Pirates. And the 1-0 pitch to Spangler is high ball two. Spangler popped up to the shortstop and he beat out a bunch, so he is one for two. He also scored one of the two runs by the Houston Colts in a tie ball game. Spangler batting 272. Now Mizell, the left-hander, to the left-handed batter with a 2-0 pitch. Almost hits him and he goes down, ball three. We were talking the other day with Mizell about how he ever got a name like Vinegar Ben. He comes from the town of Vinegar Bend in Alabama. And of course he was named after the town. Now the next question is, how did the town get the name? Here's a 3-0 pitch by Vinegar Bend. Up high, ball four. So Mizell walks his second man and puts Spangler at second base, at first base, and brings up Billy Goodman. Mizell said that the way the town got named was that years and years ago they were building a railroad through this area. And they were feeding the workers on molasses, and the molasses turned into vinegar, so they poured it out of the river that was nearby. The river happened to have a bend there, so it's called Vinegar Bend. Now, I don't know whether you believe that or not. There's a bunt down towards the third baseman, Mantia. He is up, goes to first base to Charlie Neal, and they move the runner down to second base, and a sacrifice bunt by Billy Goodman. Out at second base, Al Spangler. He represents the go-ahead run in the ball game. It's a 2-2 game. And the batter now, Ramon Mejia, the top man for the Houston Colt 45. He's batting 294. But he leads the club in home runs with eight and runs batted in with 22. He's a right-handed batter playing in right field. One man out in the bottom of the fifth inning. Mejias was a boy signed while I was in spring training with the Pittsburgh Pirates down in Havana, Cuba. First pitch is high, ball one. He was working in the cane field when Branch Rickey scattered him and brought him in for a tryout with the ball club. He looked so good he was signed up. He's had quite a minor league record, nothing going too much in the majors. One ball and no strikes with one out. Al Spangler, fast man at second. A play there. Charlie Neal moves over, but Spangler gets back. One time in 1954 with Waco in the big state league, Mejia hit in 54 consecutive games. He can run. Rides out of the plate to Mejia's outside, ball two. Fastball missing high and outside. Two balls, no strikes. Mejia's in his first year of pro ball in 1953, hit 322. 
And that year, he led the league in stolen bases with 42, which tells you he can run. Mizell into the stretch, checking the runner at second. And the pitch back to the plate. A high change gets by the catcher. Back to the stand. Spangler goes to third base and holds there. And we'll see how that scored. It could go just about either way. Scored a pass ball on Sammy Taylor, the catcher. This was not a hard pitch to handle. It was a change of pace, and Taylor got his glove on it. It was high outside, but he couldn't hold it. It rolled all the way back to the screen. So now moving over to third base, Al Spangler. He is there with one out, and the infield moves in. Colt 45 is using the base pass with their speed very well. They've had two stolen bases. Two-two game as Mizell goes into the full windup and the pitch to Mejia is high and that's ball four. That puts Mejia at first base. That's walk number three given up by Mizell. And it brings up Norm Larker. Norm has grounded out twice to Charlie Neal at second base. He's batting 266, a left-handed batter playing first base. Now the shortstop and second baseman move back for the chance at the double play with one out. Mantia playing even with the bag at third, and of course, at first base, Ed Boucher holding the runner there. Bottom of the fifth inning. Mizell into the stretch, and the first pitch to the left-handed batter is high, ball one. Now some stirring in the bullpen of the New York Mets. And getting up Ken McKenzie. Ken McKenzie, a left-hander, taking his warm-up pitches in the bullpen for New York. Bullpen in this ballpark, located about halfway down in foul territory from first base to the outfield fence. One old pitch is it on the ground, a chance for two. Neal up and over to Chacon in time, the first in time, a double play. And that retires the side and a fine play by Charlie Neal. In the inning for the Colt 45, no runs on no hits. There were no errors in the inning. Two walks, two men left, one man left, and the score at the end. A five innings of play. The New York Mets two, the Houston Colts two. Right here, it's two to two as we move to the top of the sixth inning. And the batter in the batter's box for the New York Mets against Jim Golden is Joe Christopher. Golden, the right-hander, with his first pitch. Hit on the ground of the shortstop. Up with the ball. It's short down button over to first in time. The Norm Rocker, one out. One pitch and one man down. The batter now, Frank Thomas. Joe Christopher was just recalled from Syracuse. He arrived about 5.30 tonight. He was hitting well there, 336 with six home runs. Now here's Frank Thomas, just off a hot series up in Milwaukee. Frank singled in the second inning to continue his consecutive game hitting streak. It's up to 10 now. And he grounded into a double play when he hit hard down to the third baseman. So he's one for two. Right-handed batter playing in left field. And Golden's first pitch to him, a strike call. The fastball through in the inside corner at the letters. The Mets two runs on three hits. Houston two runs on five. Jim Golden with a one-run record. Back with a change of pace. It's inside, ball two. Make that ball one. One ball, one strike. Golden's only victory came at the expense of the Mets. That was in a relief jar. Back to the plate with a curve. Thomas started to swing, try to hold up, but went on around. So the count, one ball, two strikes. <laughs> Golden worked four and one-third innings against the Mets in the polo grounds, and he allowed two runs and four hits and picked up the victory when Don Button won the ball game with a three-run home run in the 11th inning. Scored the game five to two. Now the right-hander back to Frank Thomas. This is a fast slider that gets by the catcher. Ball two. Two balls, two strikes. Frank Thomas batting in the top of the sixth with one out. Good crowd on hand here at Houston. Stadium holds about 33,000 people. We'd guess there might be 
About 20, 23,000 in it. Next pitch to Thomas hit off the fist. High in the air. The shortstop moving back in the shallow left field calls. And Button makes the catch. So Thomas goes down for out number two. And Ed Boucher steps in. Boucher has scored one run. He was safe in an air. And he also was out when he topped the ball out in front of home plate and was thrown out by the catcher. So officially 0 for 2. Left-handed batter. And the pitch to him has popped off the hands in foul territory coming over Hal Smith but going out of play. One strike with two men out to score two to two. New York Mets will play a night game here tomorrow night, and that'll be 10 o'clock starting time, New York City. Next pitch to Boucher outside, a fastball, ball one. One ball, one strike. Then they'll move to Los Angeles for a series there, three night games. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Game time there, 11 o'clock New York time. There's a little soft line drive taken by Bob Asimani as he moves to his right about knee high. That retires the side. Three up and three down for the Mets in the top half of the sixth inning and the score at the end of five and one half innings of play. The New York Mets two, the Houston Colt 45 two. Coming up now, a musical pitch with an interesting switch. Pieces, pieces. Moving along to the bottom half of the sixth inning with the score all tied up at two to two. And coming up the bat in their half of the sixth for the Colt 45 will be Carl Warwick and then Hal Smith and Bob Astromani. Warwick beat out a bunt in the second inning for his only base hit. He is one for two. A right-handed batter, batting 276. He was acquired from the St. Louis Cardinals. There's a line drive on the first pitch to Carl Warwick in the left field for a base hit. Right on by Felix Mantia. Thomas up with the ball, holds him at first. And that's base hit number six in the ball game for the Colt 45. The second one off Mizell, and that brings up Hal Smith. Smith over two. He has popped up to the third baseman, flat out to center field. Batting 247, a right handed batter, a catcher in the ball game. Mizell in relief of Dave Hillman, and the first pitch is on the ground to Mantia. Good shot at two. Over to Neal in time, and down the first base in time, a double play. There was no doubt about that, but Mantia took it on the first hop and completed the double play in very fast time. So now two outs, the base in the race, and the batter is Bob Aspermani. <laughs> As for money, has popped up in foul territory to the catcher and single. He also stole second base. He's batting 285, a right handed batter. Was born and makes his home in Brooklyn, New York. Mizell with a first pitch inside, ball one. As for money, backing away from the plate. Pitch was not too close. One ball, no strike. Aspermati was signed by the Brooklyn Dodgers. Right off the flat push sand lots. Next pitch to him, a strike call. He attended the same high school in Brooklyn, which produced major leaguers Sandy Koufax and Joe Pignatano. Lafayette High in Brooklyn, New York. A 1-1 one -one pitch to Aspermati, a changeup that slides up too high. Two balls and one strike. Vinegar Ben Mizell with a record of one win and one loss on the year. He had some great seasons right here for Houston. His next pitch to Aspermani is fouled back into the crowd behind home plate. And the count is two balls and two strikes. <laughs> Mizell, one year back in 1951 for Houston, struck out 257 batters, 238 innings, which means he threw hard, and I can attest to that. I caught him in 1953 
There's an old punch hit in the center field. Hickman coming on quickly. He takes it on the fly and makes the catch for the third out. In the inning for the Colt 45, no runs on one hit. It was a race in the double play. There were no errors and no one left. And the score at the end of six innings of play, the New York Mets two, the Houston Colts two. You know, lots of fans are switching to the Mets, especially after their real good streak here. And lots of fans are switching to Viceroy for the taste that's right. Light up a Viceroy and find out what we mean. When we say Viceroy's got the taste that's right. Well, the New York Mets will be home, and of course, you know about it by now. We certainly have been telling you about it, but it's certainly worth telling about. They'll be home coming May 30th against the Los Angeles Dodgers for a big Memorial Day doubleheader. Then a night game on May 31st, and then the Dodgers leave town, but the San Francisco Giants come in. They'll be playing on the weekend. You can get tickets for all three of the games with the Giants, and also with the Dodgers, and also with the Giants by dropping into the Polo Grounds. They have a ticket window there, seven days a week, or downtown at Grand Central Station, over by the Vanderbilt Round side, or in Pennsylvania Station in the Long Island waiting room. You can also get ticket reservations, make them there at all the Howard Clothing stores in the New York area. Moving now to the top of the seventh inning, and once again coming in to detail the action for you, Bob Murphy. Charlie Neal, single to right field, driving in a run back in the second, and lined out to the shortstop in the fourth inning. A high fly ball hit the left field, Ambling a little bit toward the line is Al Spangler. He's under it now, and Spangler makes the grab, retiring Charlie Neal. Neal flies to left on the first pitch thrown by Jim Golden. Golden has given up only one hit over the last four and one-third. Final score in St. Louis now. The Cardinals tonight beat the Philadelphia Phillies four to one. Ray Washburn relieved Ernie Brolio in the second and picked up the victory. Dennis Bennett, the losing pitcher. There were home runs by Roy Severs and by Sammy White, or rather Bill White. This is in there for a strike to Felix Mantilla. Felix has drawn a walk and grounded out third to first. Mantilla hitting at 310. Now Golden winds. In comes his pitch. Outside and low. One ball, one strike. Three innings complete now in Los Angeles. Giants nothing. Dodgers nothing. Breaking ball on the outside corner, a strike. One ball and two strikes down to Felix Mantilla. Sammy Taylor waiting in the on-deck circle. New York tallied twice in the second. Houston came up with two in the third, and the game has remained scoreless since. It's tied up two to two. We're in the top of the seventh. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Jim Golden fanning Felix Mantilla with a curveball. 5 strikeouts for right-hander Jim Golden. Two outs and nobody on. The hitter now is Sammy Taylor. Golden has now retired. The last seven men to face him. He's been getting tougher as this ball game moves along. Sammy Taylor, the batter. Round ball past the mound towards second. In the center field for a base hit. Sammy takes the turn. He's on with a ground single, hit up the middle, beyond the reach of shortstop Don Budden. Now, Vinegar Bend will be coming up for the second time. He singled to right center in the fifth inning. This will be the second time up for Wilmer Mizell. Vinegar Ben hitting a 333 on the year, two for six. <laughs> Sammy Taylor on first, two men down in the top of the seventh. Pitch thrown by Jim Golden. He starts him off with a curve and it breaks over at the knees for a call strike. Jim Golden, 26-year-old right-hander from Topeka, Kansas, on the mound for the Houston Colt 45. Low and inside, one ball, one strike. He got into 28 games with the Dodgers last year, won one and lost one.
Larker holds against the runner. Swing and a miss by Mizell. One ball and two strikes. This game tonight, you have Gold and a right-hand pitcher working for Houston. He bats left-handed. Mizell, a left-hand pitcher, bats right-handed. Just off the inside corner, and the count is even now at two and two. Houston, two runs on six hits and one error. The Mets, two runs, four hits and two errors. Now Jim Gold at up in pitching position. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Swing, foul tip. Whether it is missed, it popped out of Smitty's glove. He picks it up and tags Mizell with the side is out. So Jim Golden now has struck out six in the game. Mets out on the seventh inning with no runs, one hit, no errors, one left on. At the end of six and a half innings, the score, the Mets two and the Colt 45, two. And now a word from Viceroy Cigarettes. I have this band and it really swings. And we have this singer who really sings. We just finished playing for a nice bunch of folks when I discovered that I was out of smoke. Someone handed me an unfiltered pack. Too harsh for me, I gave it back. And filters, they either taste strong or too thin. Then a cute little singer said, Where have you been? Viceroy tastes the way you'd like a filter cigarette to taste. Not too strong, not too light. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. That's right. Well, the singer's still with me, but I got a new band. It's round and it's gold, and it's on my left hand. <laughs> That's right. So now I know, and I'll take all bets. If you smoke all seven filter cigarettes, you'll find some too strong. Some too light. But Viceroy's got... The taste that's right. That's right. Oh, that's right. That's, that's right. right. W.A.B.C. Last half of the seventh inning in Houston now. The game tied 2-2, and Don Button will be out to lead off against Vinegar Ben Mizell. Button lashed a triple on a line drive up the alley in right center field. It came in to score on Jim Golden's grounder. Then drew a walk in the fourth inning. So Button one for one in the game. Houston Colt 45, after selecting Eddie Bursu as their number one selection in the draft, and traded Bursu for Don Button. A high fly hits the left center field. Moving over goes Jim Hickman. Thomas comes over. They almost run together, and it's Frank Thomas who makes the catch. They pulled up side by side, and at the last moment, Thomas takes it. One away, nobody on. Now Jim Golden coming out. After giving up two runs in the second inning, he has taken a hit to his belt and pitched an outstanding game. Since the second, when New York scored their two runs, Golden has allowed no runs and just two base hits. Left-hander against left-hander. Ground ball hit foul in behind Jimmy Adair, coaching at first. Night game tomorrow night, the last of the two-game series, will be on the air at 9.55. Jay Hook will hurl for the Mets tomorrow night. And Turk Farrell will be on for the Houston Colt 45. He bluffs at a bun. That ignores the pitch and it's out of the strike zone. One ball, one strike. Mizell into that big windup. Down comes his pitch. That's over. A strike on the inside corner. One ball and two strikes. One out. Nobody on. Foul ball. Wafted back up into the crowd. And this will be out of play. This has been a very comfortable night for a game. Temperature hovering around 90 throughout most of the afternoon. But... Prevailing wind all over Texas usually blows toward that left field fence and has kept things very cool and comfortable. And the ball has popped up on the right side of the infield. On the skin of the infield pass, Charlie Neal waiting for it. And Charlie makes the catch for the out. Two up and two set aside by Mizell. The batter now will be Al Spangler, the left fielder. 
Spangler hitting at 272 has stopped a short, bunted for a base hit, and drawn a walk. He stole second back in the third inning and later came in to score on a base hit by Billy Goodman. Jim Golden and Billy Goodman have driven in the two runs for Houston. Charlie Neal and Sammy Taylor have knocked in the runs for the New York Mets. Ball one. Al Spangler, left-hand hitter waiting. Mizell winds and pitches. A line drive hit hard into right, a base hit. Joe Christopher is up with it on the skip. Spangler swings around first and holds up there. Al Spangler getting his second hit of the game. He's now two for three, and he's been on base three straight times. Third hit off Mizell at the seventh in the game for Houston, and it brings up the veteran Billy Goodman. Goodman has slid to left, single to center, driving in a run, and he laid down a good sacrifice bunt, moving Spangler over his last time up. Now Mizell will be watching Spangler close. There he goes, a throw to first. They've got him hung up in a goose chase between first and second. Chacon runs him back to Boucher. Boucher tags him out. Good motion by Vinegar Ben Mizell. With Spangler eager to get that big lead to try and steal the base to set himself up in scoring position. Mizell with a good move to first. Got him hung up between first and second. Chacon ran him back expertly to Boucher, who quickly moved up on him, and he makes the tag. The play goes from Mizell to Boucher to Chacon to Boucher. Side out of the seventh inning with no runs, one hit, no errors, and none left on. And now at the end of seven, the score remains the same. The Mets two and Houston two. Now before Lindsey Nelson takes us along to the eighth inning of this exciting pitching duel between Jim Golden and Wilmer Mizell, let's pause for station identification. This is your New York Mets station in Schenectady, WGY 810 on your radio dial. This is Lindsay Nelson with Bob Murphy and Ralph Kiner. Here in Houston, Texas, as we get set to go to the top half of the eighth inning, and the New York Mets will send up the head of the batting order, Jim Hickman, Elio Chacon, and Joe Christopher. Hickman has been up three times. He struck out, he flied to left, and he fouled out to first base. In Los Angeles, in the bottom half of the fourth inning with the Dodgers batting, Tommy Davis is homeward with one man on, so the Dodgers have taken at least a 2 nothing lead over the San Francisco Giants. That's Odell against Kofax. Tommy Davis homering in the bottom of the fourth with one man on for the Dodgers. Right here, Troy Todd, 2-2. Jim Golden, the starting pitcher, still in there for the Houston Colts 45, the right-hander. Jim Hickman waits for the first pitch. Swung on and missed for strike one. Golden has uh, become stronger as the evening has worn on here in Houston, Texas. In the second inning, when the New York Mets got their two runs, manager Harry Kraft of the Cove 45 had a pitcher warming up in the bullpen, and then in a later inning, he had uh, the bullpen going, but uh, Golden seems to have strengthened as he has gone along. Here's a pitch to Hickman. It goes high for a ball. It's 1-1. Elio Chacon is on deck now for the New York Mets. Mets scored first in tonight's game. In case you have joined us along the way, they got two runs in the top half of the second inning. The Code 45 came back to get two in the bottom of the third to tie it up, and we've gone along that way. There is a swing and a miss by Hickman at the plate. It's one and two. Defensively, the Houston Code 45 have normal archer at first, Bob Astromati at second, Don Budden at short, and Billy Goodwin at third. <laughs> Al Spangler's in left, Carl Warwick in center, Roman Mejias is in right, Hal Smith the catcher. Here is a one-two pitch to Jim Hickman at the plate. Missed outside low, and it's ball two. Two and two. For the New York Mets, Dave Hillman was the starting pitcher. He went two and two-thirds innings. Allowed the two runs, but the Colts 45 scored. That pitch to Hickman is coming in low, and it's ball three. Three balls and two strikes. A full count now to the Mets' leadoff man. Golden allowed two hits in that second inning when the Mets got their two runs. He has allowed only two more. The Mets have four hits off Jim Golden. Swinging a foul ball coming back into the crowd in this open-air stadium with no roof. 
So the count holds at three and two to Jim Hickman. Major League Baseball in Houston, Texas. Golden rubbing up the new ball now. Tomorrow night we'll be on the air at 9.55 p.m. New York time to bring you the second and concluding game of this series between the Mets and the Colt 45. Here's a 3-2 pitch to Hickman. Swung on and foul back. It's out of play. Coming back into the stands once again. And the scramble is on for the baseball. Count holds to Hickman. The New York Mets have won nine of their last 12 games. Coming into Houston, Texas for the first time ever off a hot series in Milwaukee in which they took three of four and they now trail the Milwaukee Braves by only one game in the National League standing. Here's a swing and a miss, strike three, strike him out. And that is strikeout number seven for Jim Golden. He has walked only one, so with one man out and nobody on, the New York Mets send up Elio Chacon. He has walked two, I beg your pardon. He walked Chacon and he walked Mantilla. Chacon is nothing for two in the walk. Right hand batter. Now Joe Christopher moves into the on deck circle. Golden winds and fires, and there's a fly ball to left field. Al Spangler is moving in now. He has it lined up, he's waiting, and Spangler takes it for the out. So Elio Chacon flies out to Al Spangler in left field for the second out of the inning with nobody on base. And that will bring up, bring up Joe Christopher playing his first game of the regular season for the New York Mets. Christopher, of course, was in spring training with the New York Mets and was used frequently in exhibition games, came into the polo grounds with the Mets for their workout before they went to St. Louis to open the season. But that was the day that uh, he was sent to Syracuse. Brought back this afternoon. Here's a pitch to Christopher. It is high for a ball. Not second, struck out and grounded out short to first. Nothing for three. Native of the Virgin Islands, Joe Christopher. His golden pitch, breaking low and away. It's ball two, two and all, with two men out and nobody on base. For the New York Mets, top half of the eighth inning, score tied, two, two. Mets have only four hits. The Colts have seven. This is a 2-0 and o pitch to Christopher. He fouls it back. It is out of play into the crowd. So they counted two balls and one strike. Frank Thomas waiting around in the on-deck circle for the New York Mets. The Mets will leave here after tomorrow night's game and fly into Los Angeles where they will open a series with the Los Angeles Dodgers in Dodger Stadium at Chavez Ravine. On Wednesday night, they have three night games in Los Angeles, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday night. Here's a pitch to Christopher Swung, and it's a ground ball, hits the bag, is going on down the line and left, and Christopher turns it first, is digging for second, as Spangler fires it in, Christopher slides safely as the throw gets away at second base. Joe Christopher with a double, landed right across the bag, and Billy Goodman tried to backhand it, trap it, and said uh, it went right on down the line into the bullpen corner. Run down down there by Al Spangler, and Christopher is on at second now with the potential go-ahead run for the New York Mets. In the top half of the eighth inning, that is Christopher's first base hit as the New York Mets. Double down the left field line, and Frank Thomas is coming up with two men out. Thomas tonight single to keep his consecutive game hitting streak alive at ten straight games in which he has hit safely. That was in the second inning. He hit into a double play in the third, and he popped to short in the sixth inning. Ed Boucher kneeling in the on-deck circle. Jim Golden into the stretch. Christopher leads it second. Here is the pitch low and away for ball one. The Mets making a bid here in the top half of the eighth inning of a ball game that is tied 2-2. Golden is into the stretch now as Christopher leads it second. Here's the pitch to Thomas. Low and away it gets by and coming on back. To the barrier, and Christopher moves on to third. Way outside and low. Scored as a wild pitch. It is scored as a wild pitch. Al Smith tried to get the big glove over, but could not reach it. Did not touch it. He came all the way back, and Christopher moved on to third. Two men out. Count of two balls and no strikes now to Frank Thomas at the plate. 
So the New York Mets have moved the potential go-ahead run as far as third here in the top half of the eighth inning. A conference at the mound between pitcher Jim Golden and catcher Hal Smith. Conference is continuing. Bob Tiefenauer throwing in the bullpen. Bob Tiefenauer throwing in the bullpen for the Houston Colts 45. All right, Smith has resumed his position behind the plate. Jim Golden looks in to get the sign for the 2-0 pitch to Frank Thomas. Christopher leads down the line at third. Here's the pitch. Outside, and Frank Thomas bluffs the butt. And Christopher slid back into the bag at third, about a half slide, as Hal Smith fakes the throw down there. Thomas uh, on a 2-0 pitch, shortening up as though to push that ball, as he did in Milwaukee. With two outs and a runner at third, he uh, pushed the base hit past the pitcher to score the runner. That time he took it for ball three. It was way outside, so here's a 3-0 and pitch now to Thomas. Well, ball four, he walked him. That is the third walk given up by Jim Golden, and Thomas goes to first. Christopher holds it third. Conference at the mound now. Norm Larker comes in from first. Hal Smith comes in from uh, his position uh, to confer with Jim Golan. Ed Boucher is coming up for the Mets. Scored a run in the second inning. Mets scored a run in the second inning. He is nothing for three for the night. He, uh, in the second inning, bunted the ball and attempting to sacrifice Frank Thomas up, and uh, all was thrown away. Thomas takes his lead at first, Christopher at third, as Boucher waits at the plate, Golden deals. Pitches way inside, and it's blocked up the first baseline by Hal Smith, no advance. As Smith blocked the ball to keep it out in front of him, with uh, the go-ahead run on at third. Umpire Ed Sudol behind the plate asks to see the baseball, and he's gonna put another one in play. So it is a ball one shot to Ed Boucher. Thomas is the base runner at first. Christopher the base runner at third. Now Charlie Neal is in the on-deck circle for the New York Mets. Stephen Hour continues to throw in the bullpen for the Houston Colts 45. Here is the pitch to Boucher. In there for a call strike. One and one. Off-speed pitch right in there. Boucher watched it over. It's one ball and one strike. Boucher and Gil Hodges are the first baseman on the Mets roster at this moment, with Thornberry uh, having gone to Baltimore, the hospital. Has a pitch outside for ball, it's two and one. Marv Thornberry went to Johns Hopkins in Baltimore to uh, let them have a look at a knee that's been bothering and possibly to treat it. So he went from Milwaukee directly to Baltimore. Two balls and one strike to count to Boucher at the plate with runners at first and third, score tied 2-2. Golden's pitch, missing way outside, and it's three and one now. Three balls, one strike. Golden takes the walk around, hands on hips now. Kicks at the rubber a couple of times. Looks around the outfield. Boucher standing in the batter's box. Runners leading now at first and third as Golden is into the stretch. This is a 3-1 pitch. Outside, ball four. He walked him and the bases are loaded with Charlie Neal coming up. That is walk number four, given up by Jim Golan. Catcher Hal Smith has gone out to the mound. Charlie Neal, a right-hand batter, coming around. He's single to drive in a run in the second inning. Up to short, slide to left. He is one for three for the evening and has one run batted in. Felix Mantilla moves out to the on-deck circle now for the New York Mets. Two men out. As far as the New York Mets are concerned, it is up to Charlie Neal here in the top half of the eighth. As he faces Jim Golden, who has given up only four hits to the Mets. Golden works for the windup. Here's the pitch. It goes high for ball one to Charlie Neal. Christopher, the base runner at third. Thomas, the base runner at second. Boucher, the base runner at first. Again, Golden is looking in to get a sign from catcher Hal Smith. 
He has it. He's up on the rubber. Dips into the windup. Here's the pitch. Swung on a ground ball to third. Billy Goodman takes it. He's playing across the second for the fourth there. That retires the side. Charlie Neal with a ground ball. Hit sharply to Billy Goodman at third. He fielded it through on to Bob Astromati at second. For the fourth that retired the side toward the top half of the eighth. The New York Mets got no runs on one hit, no errors, and three men left. And so, at the end of seven and one-half innings of play, the score is the New York Mets 2 and the Houston Colts 45 2. Coming up now, jazz, smooth, suave, and sweet. Listen. <laughs> song says, people everywhere sing out, my beer is Rheingold, the dry beer. And dry tells you why. Yes, sir. Dry tells you Rheingold has a brisk, bright, clean taste all its own. Discover the difference dry makes. Pour yourself a tall, refreshing glass of Rheingold Extra Dry. Enjoy it, along with the ball game. Here is a final score in the American League. The Detroit Tigers have defeated the Chicago White Sox by a score of 7-3. For Detroit, seven runs on 12 hits and two errors. For the White Sox, three runs on eight hits and one error. The winning pitcher is Poitak, and the loser is Early Wen. Calavita home in the ballgame. So did Chico Fernandez, and so did Luis Saparicio. And now here is a pinch hitter coming up. Jim Pendleton is batting for Billy Goodman. Manager Harry Kraft going to a pinch hitter here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Jim Pendleton batting for Billy Goodman. Goodman with one for three tonight and drove in a run. Then he Ben Mizell into the windup and here's the pitch to Pendleton right in there for a call strike one. Pendleton is a big right hand batter. Mizell works. Misses and it's ball one. One one. Roman Mejias now on deck. As the Houston Colt 45s and the New York Mets are locked up here in a 2-2 ball game in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Mizell's delivery. In there. Let up pitch and Pendleton watched it in for a call strike two. It's one and two. As Bob Murphy has pointed out, Vinegar Ben Mizell, Wilmer Mizell, is well known here in Houston because he pitched for the Houston Buffs in Texas League competition. Here's a pitch fired uh, outside for ball. It's 2-2. And in 1951, he had a big season for the Houston Buffs. Two balls, two strikes. Nizel again is set to work. Here's a pitch swung on after drive going out in the center field. Jim Hickman chasing it back. This one is way back and it is being chased off the wall. Pendleton is rounding second. He is heading for third. Chacon is the relay man, and he fires it on in. Holding at third is Pendleton with a triple off the wall in left center field. In between Thomas and Hickman. And the Houston Colt 45s now have the potential go-ahead run on here in the bottom half of the eighth inning as Pendleton has tripled to open it up. And that brings on Roman Mejias. That's number three and the manager Harry Kraft's batting order. He is nothing for two and a walk. Sammy Taylor is out now checking with Wilmer Mizell. And big Jim Pendleton hopped on a 2-2 pitch and ripped it far out into left center field off the wall for three bases. Score is tied 2-2 and now the New York Mets have moved the infield in hoping for a play at the plate. Mayers is a right-hand batter. He has a season's batting average of 294. He leads the Houston Colts 45 in the matter of batting averages. He has eight home runs. Mizell is into the stretch. And here's the pitch to Mejias. This is for ball one. It's 
the Houston Coast 45s who are making a bid to go ahead here now in the bottom half of the eighth inning. With Pendleton at third. And nobody out. Mizell's pitch is outside for ball two. It's 2-0 two oh now to Mejia. And Norm Larker is on deck to be followed by Carl Warwick. Wilmer Mizell in trouble here as a count of two balls and no strikes to Mejia's. Looking in to get the sign from Sammy Taylor. Now into his big stretch. The pitch, outside ball three. It's three and out of Mejia's. Pitching coach Red Ruffing of the New York Mets, hands on hips down in the bullpen area, staring in at the action on the diamond. And now Harry Cheedy comes out of the dugout to go down toward the bullpen, and we're going to have some action down there. It's Ken McKenzie up and throwing now. Ken McKenzie coming up to throw in the bullpen. Mejia's hits a fly ball to left field. Moving over is Hickman, tagged up at third is Pendleton, and he makes the catch. Pendleton tags, it's coming home, and he scores. <laughs> Roman Mejia has left it a high fly ball to left center. Jim Hickman came over and made the catch, but Pendleton tagged up and scored after the catch in the Houston Colt 45s. have moved out in front by a score of 3-2. to two. Give Mejia a sacrifice fly and a run batted in. So with nobody on, there is one man out now, and Norm Larker is coming up. Ground it out, ground it out, and hit into a double play. Mizell works for the windup. Pitch to Larker, dips in there for a call, strike one. The hit by Pendleton was hit number eight for the Colts 45 tonight off the combined efforts of Dave Hillman and Wilmer Mizell. That ball is low. For ball, it's 1-1. Dave Hillman was the starter tonight for the Mets. Worked two and two-thirds innings in which he gave up two runs on four hits, struck out none and walked none. Mizell, of course, the pitcher of record. Pitch goes high for a ball. It's two and one. Jim Golden, the starter for the Colt 45s, has worked all the way. He was uh, given up only five hits to the New York Mets this evening. Here's a swing and a ground ball to Charlie Neal at second. Up with it, and he plays over to Ed Boucher in time for the out. So for the fourth time tonight, Norm Larker has grounded to second base three times. Uh, play went on to first, and one was a double play. Two men out, nobody on, and Carl Warwick's coming up. In Los Angeles, at the end of five innings of play, the Los Angeles Dodgers lead the San Francisco Giants two to nothing. Billy O'Dell for San Francisco against Sandy Koufax of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Here's a pitch to Warwick. It goes high for a ball. Carl Warwick has two hits tonight. Two for three. Houston Colt 45, three in the New York Mets, two in the bottom half of the eighth inning. It's a swing and a drive into left field for a base hit. Frank Thomas over, up with it. Whips it back in and holding it first. Here's Carl Warwick with his third base hit of the night. A sharp single to left. And that will bring up catcher Hal Smith. He fouled out the third slide to center and hit into a double play. That was hit number nine for the Houston Colts. First base, not in time. Warwick getting back safely. In case you'd like to look ahead to the top half of the ninth inning, the New York Mets are scheduled to send up Felix Mantilla, Sammy Taylor, and the pitcher. Pitch is low for ball. One ball and no strikes to Hal Smith. Tremonti is on deck for the Colt 45. Go over to 
first. I'll worry back safely. Again, Mizell goes into the big stretch. Here's the pitch. It's low for a ball. Al Smith watching it low, and it's 2-0 to him. We'll be on the air tomorrow night at 9.55 p.m. New York time with the second and concluding game of this series. We'll be on the air at 10.55 New York time from Los Angeles on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday night. Here's a pitch coming in high, and it's ball three, three and oh. And Ken McKenzie is throwing in the bullpen for the Mets. Here's a pitch in there for a call. Strike one. It's three and one. Earl Warwick takes his lead. Pitch is outside. Ball four. He walked him. So Harold Smith goes to first with a base on ball. Warwick moves to second. And Bob Aspromani is coming up. Catcher Sammy Taylor goes out to check with Wilmer Mizell. Manager Casey Single comes out of the dugout. The sign has gone to the bullpen. And we're going to have a pitching change. Manager Casey Single. The moment he came out of the dugout, sent the sign down to the bullpen. He is walking on out to the mound now. Casey Single at the mound now with catcher Sammy Taylor and pitcher Wilmer Mizell. The official paid attendance here tonight, 16,317. And now manager Casey Single uh, is signaling down to umpire Al Foreman, who is all down, uh, all down the line there at the bullpen. And and he is going to leave Mizell in. Foreman now is walking slowly back toward his uh, post there at first. As Mizell is going to stay in the ball game, and Single returns to the dugout, deciding to leave Mizell in the ball game. After he got to the mound and checked, decided to leave him there. And Bob Astromani steps into the bat as much. He's one for three tonight. Runners at first and second. Two men out. Here's a pitch in there for a call strike. McKenzie continues to throw in the bullpen. Now, here's the pitch. Swung on a ground ball, he shortstop. Chacon has it placed to kneel for the force at second that retires the side. And so, Mizell got Astromati on the ground ball, and in the bottom half of the eighth inning, the Houston Cove 45 got one run on two hits. There were no errors and two left. And so at the end of eight full innings of play in Houston, Texas, the score is the Houston Cove 45 three, and the New York Mets, too. And now to give us a rundown on scores of other games in the Major League, here's Bob Murphy. All right, Lindsay, everything is over with the exception of the Dodger-Giant game on the West Coast. In the National League tonight, the St. Louis Cardinals beat the Philadelphia Phillies 4-1. to one. Ray Washburn, who relieved Brolio in the second, the winning pitcher. Shans came on in the eighth. Dennis Bennett, the loser, there were home runs by Roy Severs and by the Cardinals' Bill White. Cincinnati and Milwaukee postponed rain. Tommy Sturdivant turned in a tremendous relief job as Pittsburgh beat the Chicago Cubs 8-4. to Sturdivant came on in the third inning and pitched scoreless ball the remainder of the way. Dick Ellsworth, the loser. At the end of five and a half, the Dodgers are leading the Giants 2 to nothing. On a fourth inning home run with the man on by Tommy Davis, Sandy Koufax pitching for the Dodgers against Billy O'Dell. In the American League, Minnesota beat Washington 5-3, to Pasquale winning his sixth. Dave Stenhouse, the loser, homers by Killebrew and Pearsall. The rampaging Cleveland Indians added three more home runs tonight, including a three-run homer in the ninth inning by Romano to beat Baltimore 10-7. Winner in relief, Gary Bell. Loser in relief, Billy Heff. Home runs by Don Dillard, Woody Held, and Romano for Cleveland. Jim Keel hit one, Brant two, and Snyder one for the Orioles. Kansas City beat the Red Sox 10-5. Jerry Walker winning his fifth, Conley the loser. Askew, Walker, and Bruce Sue hit home runs. And Detroit beat the White Sox 7-3. Foy tacked the winner, win the losing pitcher, Calavito, Fernandez, and Aparicio connecting. The Yankees and the Angels were not scheduled. Right here, we're going to the ninth inning. 
The Mets one run behind, and let's follow the action with Lindsey Nelson. Thanks very much, Bob Murphy. Felix Mantilla is up to lead off for the Mets. The Houston Code 45 has moved on, Button over to third. Bob Astromati has moved to short, and Bob Little is just playing second base. Jim Golden winds and fires, and the pitch is low and away, rolling away from Hal Smith. No damage done. There are no base runners. And it's a ball one count to Mantilla with Sammy Taylor in the on-deck circle for the New York Mets, trailing by one run, going to the top half of the ninth inning. Mantilla walked, grounded out, and struck out. Nothing for two, and a walk tonight. Season's batting average 307. Jim Golan, the starting pitcher, still in. While the Houston Colts 45, he winds and fires. And a foul tip has caught Ed Tudor on the top of the head. Umpire Ed Tudor caught uh, by a foul tip. Taken off his mask, and now Bill Joukowsky's coming up from third, and Harold Foreman coming up from first to check with Ed Tudor. was jammed up, uh, might have been struck by just uh, the ball off the glove. We'll have to wait and see what the call was because Mantia started to swing and checked it, and then Hal Smith had moved in closely, and the ball ricocheted out of there. Might not, might have hit the bat, might have hit the glove. We'll have to wait and see what the call is. As Lynn Lisher has come out of the uh, dugout there to check with umpire Ed Sudol. umpires in checking now and Cookie Lavagetta has come down from the coaching lines at first to check with Ed Sudol who was hit by the pitch and he's gonna be okay apparently he comes around and takes his position behind catcher Hal Smith <laughs> Sudol is checking now with Felix Mantia And Tudor says the count is one ball and one strike. So it uh, is 1-1. One, one. Here's the pitch missing inside. It's ball two. Dean Stone is throwing in the bullpen now for the Colt 45. Mantia is leading off here for the New York Mets in the top half of the ninth inning as they trail the Colt 45 by one run. Here's a 2-1 pitch on the way. In there for a call strike two. It's 2-2 two two to Felix Mantia. Here's the pitch. Swung on as a fly ball to left field. Al Spangler is moving in underneath. Waiting, and Spangler takes it for the out. So there's one away for the Mets, batting in the top half of the ninth inning. And coming up, Sammy Taylor, left-hand batter. Had a sacrifice fly to drive in a run in the second inning. He struck out in the fifth, and he singled in the seventh. Golden looking in for a sign from Hal Smith. There is nobody on. Richie Ashburn has come out swinging a bat in the on-deck circle now. Here is a swing and a miss at the plate. As uh, Sam Taylor golfed at one. Strike one count. Richie Ashburn has come out to the on-deck circle now as the batter. Or Wilmer Mizell. New York Mets trying to get a base runner some way anyway here in the top half of the ninth inning. That pitch is high for a ball. The Colts went ahead in the bottom half of the eighth when pinch hitter Jim Tundlin batting for Billy Goodman tripled and he was brought in uh, by the sacrifice fly hit by Roman Mejia. And that put the Colts 45 out in front by a score of three to two and that's where they are right now. It's a swing and a ground ball. It is going to second base. It's off the glove of Lillis. He has no play and Taylor's on at first base. And now with Ashburn coming up in order to uh, allow our stations to identify themselves, we pause now for station identification. This is WGY 810 on your dial, the General Electric Station, Schenectady. This is Lindsey Nelson with Bob Murphy and Ralph Kiner in Houston, Texas, where Sammy Taylor has just scratched a base hit, scored as a base hit, a ground ball, hit to the right of Bob Lindley, the second baseman, came over, got a glove on it, couldn't make a play. So it is a base hit for Taylor, and Rod Keneal has come on to run for him now. Rod Keneal is the pinch runner. Here is Richie Ashburn. 
Left-hand batter coming up with one man out and the runner at first. Potential tying run represented by Rod Keneal there at first base for the Mets. Dolan is into the stretch, and here is the pitch. Low and inside, and it had Richie Ashman skipping a rope to get out of the way of that one. It is ball one. Jim Hickman in the on-deck circle now for the Mets. Trying to stay alive here in the top half of the ninth inning. Neil right on the bag at first, waiting to take his lead. Now he does as Golden is into the stretch. And here's the pitch to Ashburn. In there for a tall strike. One and one to Richie. Ashburn standing just outside the batter's box. Taps the spikes. Now comes back in. Golden is into the stretch. Keneal leads at first base. Here's a pitch to Ashburn. Way inside. Fielded down into the dirt there by Hal Smith. It had Richie Ashburn crossing over across the plate. Skipping the rope again to get out of the way of that one. So it's two balls and one strike to Richie Ashburn. Rod Keneal has been managing Casey Singles' good luck charm in a recent close ball game. Here's a pitch in there for a call strike two. It's two two. Of the last nine wins of the New York Mets, Rod Keneal has scored the tying or winning run seven times. Six as a pinch runner. He scored once in the next inning game after he himself had singled. And he's on at first now, running for Sammy Taylor. Count of two balls and two strikes to Richie Ashburn at the plate. Here's the pitch. Swung on and has a drive out into left field for a base hit. Keneal is at second holding as Spangler slipped down for a moment. Fields the ball, gets back up in the area to hold Keneal at second. But Richie Ashburn slashed the ball out into left field for a base hit. Now the Mets have runners at first and second. One man out and Jim Hickman is coming up. Potential tying run on at second base now. Potential go-ahead run at first base for the New York Mets. Batting in the top half of the ninth inning. Smith had called time, went out to the mound. Now as he comes back, umpire Ed Sudol behind the plate. Takes a look at the ball and throws it out. Gives him another one. He's rubbing it up. Elio Chacon now comes out of the Mets dugout to the on-deck circle. As Sudol brushes the plate off to get things in readiness. And here is Jim Hickman. Hickman tonight struck out. Fly to left, fouled out to first and struck out. In Los Angeles, in the bottom half of the sixth inning, the Dodgers have added another run, and the Dodgers now lead the San Francisco Giants three to nothing at the end of six. Odell against Koufax, and right here in Houston, Texas, at Colt Stadium, the Colt 45 lead the New York Mets by a score of three to two. Mets batting in the top half of the ninth inning, and now Jim Hickman is being called back. Jim Hickman is being called back, and Hobie Landris is being sent up to the plate. Left-hand batter Hobie Landris is being sent up in place of Jim Hickman. Hickman 0 for 4 tonight and struck out twice. Landers stopping to work with the pine tar rag a little bit in the on-deck circle, swinging the bat. You'll recall that Landers won a ball game for the New York Mets a week ago Saturday in the bottom half of the ninth inning with a home run off Warren Spawn with Rod Keneal on base to win it by a score of 3-2 to two for the New York Mets over the Milwaukee Braves in that instance. Landreth has a season's batting average of 345. He has one home run and six runs batted in. So manager Casey Singel has gone to his bench for Hobie Landreth as the pinch hitter here in the top half of the ninth inning. Rod Keneal, the base runner at second. Richie Ashburn, the base runner at first. One man out. Jim Golden, starting pitcher still in for the Houston Colt 45. Here's the pitch to Landreth. Checks it, takes it in there for a foul strike one. Jim Golden firing it in. Landreth watched it over. Larker, the first baseman, Lillis at second, Aspermani at short, and Budden at third defensively for the Houston Colt 45. 
Is a pitch to Landis. Swung on and sliced down the line to third base, and it's in foul territory and taken for the out by Buddy. So there are two men out, and Elio Chacon is coming up. As it was popped right down the third base line behind the bag in foul territory, sliced down there by Hobie Landis. Elio Chacon is nothing for three and a walk, right hand batter. Season's batting average of 251. Daniel at second. Ashburn at first. Take their lead. Golden into the stretch. And here's the pitch to Chacon. He takes it in there for a call. Strike one. The Houston Colts 45 leading by a score of three to two and trying to protect their lead as the Mets bat here in the top half of the ninth inning. Again, Golden is into the stretch. And here's the pitch. Chacon with a fly ball out into center field. Carl Warwick is coming on calling. Warwick is waiting and he takes it for the out and the ball game's over. Elio Chacon has slid out to Carl Warwick to end the ball game. As in the top half of the ninth inning, the New York Mets got no runs on two hits, no errors, and two men left. We'll be back in a moment with the final summary and totals, but right now the final score of the ball game, the Houston Colts 45-3 and the New York Mets 2. Well, now here's a chance for you to be the umpire. Picture this Ryan Gold riddle. Runners on first and second with one out. Got it? Okay. Batter lost a high fly towards short, and the umpire correctly calls infield fly. But the ball coming down strikes the front runner standing a few feet off second. How would you rule? Is the runner out? Is the batter out? Well, the answer to this one is that it's a double play. Both the batter and the base runner are out. If the runner had been standing on second, he would have been safe. How'd you do? Well, you can ponder that ruling over a glass of two of refreshing Ryan Gold. You know, Ryan Gold just naturally goes with baseball, goes with all good times because Ryan Gold has a taste all its own. It's beer as beer should taste. And dry tells you why. It tells you that Ryan Gold is brewed the long, slow, costly away for a taste that's brisk and bright and clean, clear through. Enjoy it now, along with the game. Well, here in Houston, Texas, the Colt 45s have defeated the New York Mets by a score of 3-2. to two. To tell you something of how they did it, here's Ralph Kiner. Well, the Mets had won nine out of their last 12 games before they came into Houston. And of the nine wins, six were won in the ninth inning or extra innings. And right here again tonight, the Mets put on a short rally but couldn't get a run across to tie it up as they came into the ninth inning by a score of three to two. The Houston Colt 45s won it in the eighth inning and they used triples to win the ball game. This is a big ballpark. They couldn't hit any home runs, but they went on to hit two triples, one of them scoring the winning run in the eighth inning on a triple by a pinch hitter, Pendleton, who scored on a sacrifice fly. Dave Hillman started for the New York Mets. He worked two and two-thirds innings. He was relieved by Wilbur Ben Mizell. Wilbur pitched fine ball, gave up only one run on five hits, but he was charged with the loss. And the winning pitcher in the ball game going all the way for the Houston Colt 45s was Jim Golden. His record now, two wins and one loss, and both of his wins coming at the expense of the Mets. He won his first game in relief over the Mets in the polo grounds, a four and one thirteen relief cents. For the Houston Colt 45s, it was three runs on nine hits. They left seven men on. The Mets had two runs on seven hits. They left nine men on. That's just about the story from Texas, the first game ever played by the Mets and the Colt 45s in the state of Texas. And that wraps up another baseball game. Sure hope you enjoyed it. Ryan Gold certainly enjoyed bringing you away. Tomorrow night, we see the Mets will face the Houston Colt 45s right here in Colt Stadium, and it will be game time 9.55 in New York. We'll all be on hand to bring you the action. This broadcast came to you through the courtesy of Liebman Brewery, Brewers since 1837, and Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corporation, B&W, the mark of quality in tobacco products, and is authorized under radio rights granted by the New York Mets solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the New York Mets is prohibited. Right now, I'd like to remind you to enjoy Viceroy cigarettes. Viceroy's not too strong, not too light. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. That's right. Now this is Ralph Kiner saying so long for Lindsey Nelson and Bob Murphy and for Rheingold. Rheingold Extra Dry. Those two little words, extra dry, tell you why Rheingold is beer as beer should taste. Why Rheingold is preferred by more New Yorkers than any other beer. Rheingold is brewed from the very choicest ingredients. Brewed the long, slow, costly way for a flavor that is brisk and bright and clean, clear through. So fill up your glass with a nice cold 
Ice cold, refreshing glass of good Rheingold Extra Dry. Our statistician tonight was Joe McDonald, and our engineer was Bob Bomba. And this is Ralph Kanner saying, so long, everybody. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. Hey, Tim, on your radio dial, this is WGY Schenectady. And now here's the latest news as compiled and edited in the WGY newsroom. Official sources in Paris report discovery of a plot of the secret army to assassinate French President Charles de Gaulle. It said police have rounded up more than 15 suspects in Paris, in Marseille, and in Algiers. Informants identify the leader of the alleged assassin's group as a Paris insurance agent who was arrested Sunday. In Athens, Greek Premier Karamanlis reaffirmed his government's pro-Western policies. He won a vote of confidence in Parliament, 179 to 88. The vote came after he accused Soviet Premier Khrushchev of interfering in Greece's internal affairs through criticism of Greece's membership in NATO. Leaders of the American Medical Association have expressed strong opposition to President Kennedy's plan for medical care for older people under Social Security. In a paid TV program, one AMA official called the program a cruel hoax aimed at establishing welfare state medicine. The executive secretary of the National Council of Senior Citizens issued a statement in Washington saying there was nothing new in the statements by AMA officials. And Dr. Blue Carstensen accused them of using what he calls lies and deception to fight the president's program. The House Ways and Means Committee has put together a bill which holds intact all elements of President Kennedy's broad tariff cutting and trade promotion program. This measure is subject to reconsideration by the committee after its staff puts it in final language. Chances are heavily against any major change. In Chicago, five railroad operating unions asked that the National Mediation Board step into their dispute with ra railroad management. The unions are deadlocked with management in current negotiations on changing work rules. The tragic accident during a tactical exercise at Fort Hood, Texas. An M48 tank tumbled down a 30-foot cliff and burst into flames, killing five soldiers. A tornado was struck killed in Nebraska, injuring and sending to hospitals at least six persons. The town was without power and telephone service because lines were knocked down by the twister. It said several homes were damaged and many trees uprooted. Republican Senator Barry Goldwater says President Kennedy's new disarmament proposals border on treason. The Arizona senator said in Dallas, Texas, the U.S. cannot possibly, with safety, engage in any disarmament at the present time because it's not practical. The U.S. Air Force reports a flight of 52 jet fighter bombers, tankers, and cargo planes is proceeding from Honolulu to the Philippines. The planes are part of the forces supporting U.S. ground forces sent to Thailand. A Negro radio newscaster in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, says he has accepted an offer of a one-way ride to Africa from a white listener who wants to send him back where he came from. But the news director of station WAMO says he'll come back to the U.S. fast on tickets offered by other listeners. He says they started calling in immediately after the program on which he told of the offer. And finally, astronaut Scott Carpenter will be spared the ordeal of eating baby-type food from squeeze bottles when he goes into orbit. Scientists have devised bite-sized snacks for his space lunchbox. His ride is still scheduled tentatively for Thursday. You've just heard a summary of late world news as compiled and edited in the WGY newsroom reported by Pat Ryan. Here now is the weather forecast for the interior of eastern New York and adjacent western New England. Fair and cool tonight with low temperatures mostly in the 40s. Chance of some frost in valleys of northern Adirondacks. Tuesday, mostly sunny, but increasing high cloudiness by late afternoon. The high Tuesday in the upper 60s and 70s. Increasing cloudiness Tuesday night, followed by showers Wednesday. The low Tuesday night in the 40s and low 50s. The high Wednesday, 65 to 75. Presently, the temperature is 61 degrees. The barometer is rising. 810 on your dial, this is WGY Schenectady. Be still and know. The gold and frankincense and myrrh the wise men laid beside the manger at Bethlehem are symbols of the whole of life, says Harold Blake Walker in Heart of the Christian Year. An old Negro put the truth with apt insight when he presented himself at the mourner's bench with this remark, I is all I's got. In sober truth, that is all any of us possess. But if we give it, we give all else too. Francis of Assisi invited a friend to go with him to preach. 
All day they wandered about and came home when the day was done. But when do we preach, the friend asked. Ah, replied Francis, that's what we've been doing all day. There is something in all of us that rubs off on the world around us, and we preach one way or another all day. Once there was a man, according to an old tale, who was so filled with despondency that he decided to commit suicide. He started on a long walk to a bridge, which was to be his jumping-off place. But he promised himself that if he met one smiling, happy, friendly face on the way, he would turn back. Oddly, the story ends without answering the question whether the mission ended in suicide. The tale, however, poses a question. If that man had met you, would he have turned back? I've all I've got to offer this tired world. We can give the laughter and joy of those who have caught some hint of Bethlehem's meaning. We can give hope and confidence if we know that the love of God comes flooding down the ages from a manger and never will let us go. Be Still and Know, produced for the United Presbyterian Church in the USA, closes with these words from the Gospel of Matthew. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. The time in 30 seconds by the General Electric Clock will be nine minutes before 1 a.m. We invite you now to stay tuned for After Hours, a program of uninterrupted recorded music from now until the early hours of dawn. Thank you.